they need me to fly out to LA to entertain some type of conversation that could better what I got going on. You think I'm going to do all that work behind the scenes. Also, I'm paying out of pocket. And the nigga who only shows up when he's contracted to show up is going to then tell me that he owns a part of what I got? Are you fucking stupid? Joe didn't have to tell me shit. It was obvious. They put themselves in that position. And y'all can say all y'all want about, oh, well, yo, Joe's acting like how Spotify act. You want me to tell you the big difference between that? These dudes, if they cared about equity and whatever, and they wanted to be partners or bosses, whatever the case is, they should have done that way before it got to the point that they were at Spotify. They should have done it way before. And by the way, I do have, I have some blame for Joe. I, th I, th I think Joe, Joe allowed them niggas. And by the way, Joe, this is all your fault. Never allow, this is, this is Joe Button platform. You shouldn't allow people to speak on your platform like they are your their bosses like you. So because once the audience believed that, they felt entitled to start requesting shit like they were bosses from you. But anyway, let me get into a couple of clips at the independent business. So um Joe Budden put up today's episode on his Patreon. And I want you guys to go and check that out. If you are a fan of what Joe got going on, please go and support his Patreon. Please, okay? Anything I'm playing is strictly for educational and discussion purposes. And again, I'm going to warn you now, I'm going to do hella pauses. So don't be over here like act, play it. Nigga, go subscribe to that nigga Patreon if you want me want me not to talk, okay? So go subscribe to that nigga Patreon right motherfucking now because I'm going to talk all over the shit, all right? So um, where is it? Where is it? I'm looking on his, his page. He didn't even put up a clip of it. Let me see if I can find. By the way, it's also interesting how the how an audience gets so used to a group of guys that I'm even listening to Joe today, and you can say whatever about him. Bro, he's saying certain shit that, like, you should be like, yo. When he first said, yo, Ruri, are you a liar, blah, blah, blah. And I remember thinking about him, like, wait, what is he talking about? Unless he's, clearly we know Ruri lied about showing up to the crib. Got you. But what else? Ruri came back and literally said that he was not beefing. It was nothing about money and shit like that. Joe literally said it. It was accounting. If you're if you're caring about accounting, you're caring about money. If you're trying to do an audit, you're thinking you're not pay, getting paid enough. Y'all let these niggas just flat out lie. Flat out lie. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to skip to a few parts. This is the first part I believe that's talking about me. You know what? Where's the last pod with with Joe and the two stooges? I'll play this in the background. Well, the, the video, the video. I have the audio here. Salute to all my trusted people. And by the way, again, I want to point out again because I, I I kept hearing and people are slandering Joe for this. Again, I ain't talked to Joe. I ain't talked to Joe in a while, man. Joseph Budden has never told me any business, any news about these two stooges. I've either seen it as obvious or it's people related to both of them. Mealy Mall, find out why your friend hit me up. And this is why... I, this person's never told me stuff before, I'm going to be honest. So when I said that, when I said that Mealy Mall like two days ago on my stream that you guys are planning another strike, they didn't, if it was Joe telling me, 
Joe would tell me, yo, I'm firing them in two days. I didn't hear that. I heard you guys were going to not show up to work again. They're, they said, yo, they're leaving the pot again, bro. I said, no way. I even I, I said, bro, you got to call me. Like, no way. They're not leaving the pot again. And also, I you could tell how unsure I was because I felt, because this person never really told me anything before, I didn't want to say it. And then people later be like, yo, yo, you were wrong. Because when I said the thing about them possibly suing Joe, from credible sources, they said Rory has been describing the situation to people, right? When asked, he's been running around L.A. sucking dick. Y'all know it. He got cum stains on his hand. When he's describing the situation with the podcast to people, he is saying things like the lawyers are figuring it out. The lawyers are on it. When I hear that, and I know, like, just intuitively, these bums think they're owners, and only if Joe's a fucking idiot, he'll give up ownership and admit to them that they're owners. I'm like, if they want this, Joe won't give this. They're going to try to sue if supposedly they have a case. That's why I said it. But Joe never told me anything. Rory, you're pillow talking to your side chick. Even about your main girl. These things are unbecoming of somebody who got some shit to lose, but you know you was a bum from day one, so I'm not that shocked. Mealy Maul, you and Ruri keep talking about the cloth, 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 I'm from cloth, 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 cloth. What the fuck are you two bums talking about? Because you're doing the same thing too. You're pillow talking. I'm gonna be honest. And I don't know if Joe would have told me the truth, but I didn't even ask him. I never asked Joe. Never asked him. Other than other than when he asked me about it, he said, Act, is it true about that side chick shit? Then I said, yo, bro, what's going on over there? He said, bro, you know, people get emotional. That's it. That's all that's ever been talked about by me and the two bozos. But anyway, I think we have found a clip. Let's listen, Okay. There we go. I need hey. to see the time get hey. to move. Time's right there. Here we go. Pull Come. You this right side. Pull up. All right, Stephanie. Well, oh, good. Awesome. I want to shout out to my favorite app, greatest app in the world, the app that tolerates us sponsors us empowers us emboldens us appreciates us that's your favorite app too understands us hold up man I love that. shout out to g what's my man name the director i met at g's house what's my man name that's my man right there it's my man right there he just dropped the movie put respect on his Mikey name alfred mike you fucking right put some respect on mike no. name Hollywood. What's the name of that movie? What's North Hollywood. That's not the name of the movie. It is North Hollywood. Why do you never believe what I say to you? <laughs> All right, and subscribe to our Patreon Chat. too while you're, you know. Yep. Yeah. Hey, I think that's Parks. You heard Parks. If you are interested in Joe Budden, I'm going to be honest with you. Despite some of his faults, we all got faults. I got a few that people have publicly seen or discussed as well. No man is perfect. You know, in the space of people who are great orators, people who are great thinkers, people who are great broadcasters, people who have developed platforms of talking to the people about things within the culture that might be important to everybody or just a few um, particular niche groups. Um, Joe Budden is up there. And again, I told you, please subscribe and follow his journey. It's not one I always agree with. But please, check out his Patreon. He got some good stuff going on. And I'm going to tell you this right now. And for all of the Joe Bunn fans who might be here, I'm going to speak to you directly. If you listen and have followed Joe Bunn and you've been chronically in his life and you're following because of your love for somebody else other than Joe, you should probably exit yourself from that situation. This is the life and journey of Joe, the thoughts. None of the niggas who he ever hires gives it up like him. There was a period when he was going crazy on Drake and the third. All they were doing, yes, man, is sucking dick. 
And then after a while, when he he kind of chilled out and toned it down because he got a bunch of other deals, his life was in a different place. He had a child on the way, or then born. He was kind of chilling a bit, and everybody around him wasn't doing shit. They were waiting on Joe to give it up. Again, if you're watching his platform, you're watching the life thoughts. And if anything, if you do like somebody else on that platform, you're liking it because you want to see that person challenge Joe. But even if you're thinking he's wrong or he's a fucked up person, if you really didn't like him, you wouldn't watch. But you wouldn't watch his platform to root for somebody else. Don't ever show up to Academics platform thinking you about to see another nigga on here because you don't fuck with me. Don't show up. This is the Academics platform. That's the Joe Biden platform. If you like the Stooges, you should have been told the Stooges. You know what? We here for y'all more than Joe. Build your own shit. Us d without Joe. But nobody told him that. Anyway. What the fuck? Where did this jump to? Here we go. On his Mikey name. Alfred. Mike, you fucking right. Put some respect. Come on. With me like that. Right. You get it with the people that get it. Uh huh. That's how Ian is when he gets around the people that are like okay. up, Business. up. I think here we might have some good stuff. Let's start it here. Whenever it loads. Him. Right. Me against Nadeska. Me again. He's seen it in action. So and he expressed that in the video. It's Let's easier. For Let's go here. Ready? Versace Road, man, you know. As he's seen me in action. He can like, give you the pros and the cons of working with Joe. He disagreed. With uh, let's go back a little bit more. I'm sorry. I got to let this. Attorneys and just different people. Uh-huh. Right? And that came during the break. Okay. How so, did it go? So we should talk about it. Okay, let's talk about it. How let's did the emails go? Well, forget about that for okay. a second. Know what else I did my whole uh, work vacation? Pace around and smoke cigarettes? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I did. I did. I also spent majority of my time just watching YouTube. Just mm. watching reaction vids. Oh, uh, okay. Come on, man. You Shout out to me. Joe 420. I heard it if you said it. Mm. If you wrote it online and I read it. Mm. Now match it, nigga, bet it. I'm, I'm reading. I'm looking at reaction vids. How did, how contemplating whether I needed to do my own reaction vid. React because, to the reaction? Or yeah. react to the pod? React to the pod. Oh, okay. Like, because you can't truly give... Let me pause real quick. Yo, chat. If you're hearing another voice in the background of Joel, it's actually the, his audio engineer. I think he's been with him for like 20 plus years. If you listen to this entire episode, that guy, if he needed to, could be just as if not more challenging to Joe than this nigga. You get to realize how replaceable this bum was. Listen. A reaction. Mm. And that's what I mean when I say that Joe is a maniac and a lunatic. Like, if, unless you know me, you'll never really understand how my brain works. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm literally always watching. It's functioning. It's high action in there, even if I don't say. Again, I'm pausing a lot. Y'all got to get on that nigga Patreon if y'all want the whole thing without act. Hey, this is very true. We, Me and Joe would do everyday struggle at 8, 9 a.m. And I remember asking Joe, I said, would you? Because you know I got to go home. I got to make Instagram, YouTube video. I said, Joe, what do you do? Because he'd be hitting me on all types, all types of times of the day. We're talking about random shit. Joe, I don't know if this is a disorder. He's the most obsessive nigga I've met. He goes home. I remember he came in the complex one day and he said, again, I would kind of watch the show at home. He was like, yo, his mom watches the show, but the way how it's formatted on her TV makes it a hard experience. And he was on it. He's obsessive. It's not a nigga who just does it and forgets it. This nigga, like, is literally obsessing over everything. So the nigga would literally go home from, we go from New York to Jersey, and he's sitting by his pool, scrolling through comments, scrolling through, reading every fucking comment on the video. He's looking at imperfections. Is, is, is there any cuts? Is whatever? No edits, right? Cool. Hey, this angle, why didn't y'all, like, super obsessive. This is what I'm telling y'all about. 
when you're working at a place, usually, he's doing more than a worker at that point. When you're working at a place, usually, once you record it, wipe your hands off and you leave it. You leave. The whole day he's analyzing the content. He's analyzing what other people are saying. He's analyzing the feedback. He's analyzing the views. You know how many times that nigga came to me and be like, you're the numbers guy. Look at this views right here. We talked about these topics versus these views when we talked about this topic. And I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, yo, Joe, you're fucking crazy. I remember telling him, like, yo, Joe, you don't know YouTube. This is what it is. And then he said, you don't act. I'm going to let you lead on this. But he's like, tell me why the views ain't this. I broke it down, blah, blah. And you know what he did after? He said, act. We go into so-and-so's office. We storm it in there. He's like, we're going to, we need a demand of changes to make this different. This is somebody who does care. Mm -hmm. So on, in all the reaction vids, I mean, you can never really guess it because even in me attempting to speak cryptically and in code, you might miss it. You know, you might miss it. Ak gave a pretty good breakdown, man. <laughs> but why? Because Ak has seen me in action. True. That's what the, the bless best, you. That's what the best part about it was to me is that he knows what it's like doing business with you. Facts. Not only has he seen me in action, he can like, give you the pros and the cons of working with Joe. He disagreed with my with me every step of the way and made his own decisions and landed wherever he landed. Yeah, and great, in, in a great spot. He was disrespectful to them, but you know he, they've had a beef. They did their own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, it's Thanks. all about the timing of the universe. Fortunately for Act, when I left, when I left Complex, that gave him more leverage. Right. And he knows that. Uh -huh. So he, that's stick-up. It's stick-up time. Right. I got the gun out now. <laughs> give, give me everything I want. Everything Joe wanted, I want to. <laughs> <laughs> and to tell y'all the truth, me and Joe had that last conversation on the phone. They said, Act. And I still even didn't believe he was really leaving. I always thought he was playing a very dangerous game of chicken. But he said, Act, I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back in January. This shit is over. And he said, Act. I've communicated this with them. The writing's on the wall. He says, if you don't know this, and I give him credit for, for this, he said, if you don't know this, stick them niggas up. Shout out for them bum ass niggas, man. Here we go, here we go. Thank you, Gabe, thank you, Gabe. I'm gonna be honest with you. And if you ever hear me tell the story of Complex, I always said, I got what Joe asked for. Joe's impatient. He does this shit his own way. I don't agree with a lot of times how Joe moves business-wise. I move patient. I give, you know, I work off good faith a lot. A lot of people didn't know I showed up to Complex for eight months without a contract. The first couple days I showed up, they wanted me to sign a waiver because I wasn't on contract. And then they realized, like, okay, now Ak is rocking with us because he knows his lawyer and our lawyer, they're going back and forth, and they went back and forth a lot. I wasn't the stoppage of work guy. Joe knew that. Joe was that. Joe remember the conversation we had when Spotify came in for those Friday episodes. Joe says, I'm not doing it, Ack. They got almost a million dollars for like a few Fridays because of us. They're trying to tell us it's because of them. Let's, I'm down to stand on my two feet and prove them wrong. I'm not showing, showing up. He said, Ack, if you don't show up, He's like, I'm guaranteed that contract says not just everyday struggle has to air on a Friday. Everyday struggle with Joe Budden and academics has to has to air. And I said, you really think so? He said, Ack, trust me. Complex is just brokering our talents. I was like, really? It's a little bit new. It's before my even had really a lawyer. Joe didn't didn't show up. And then, I, you, know, I, you know, I fucked with, you know, salute to my man uh, um, Cornell there. I fucked with, like, at that time, the, the management who was fighting for us and means and shit, some two black dudes, yo, two black dudes who was trying to fight for good content there. And I talked to them, and he's like, yo, act, yo, we trying to do right, but we're not trying to fuck y'all over, man. We trying to do right by y'all. I get what's in the con. Hold up. And they gave me enough reason where I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to hang in there. I'm going to give y'all the benefit of the doubt. And I showed up. But even when I showed up, when Joe had his redemption, there was a little interruption. Because I think legal had to go go back to Spotify and say, oh, just to let y'all know, Joe won't be here. Only act. And they're like, oh. 
Then they came back and they said, okay, well, we're good with Ak, but you have to have another celebrity across from him. You can't just have anybody. You can't just have whoever had the office. And, I'm, and, and who knows what that number was. I don't know if, if the number went down or stayed the same. But I think that was vindication for Joe because Joe was like, got him. I played chicken. They didn't want to give give up. I stepped out or I didn't, di- didn't do it because he, we weren't initially contracted to do it. But he got his proof of that, hey, it does matter if he's there or not. He did his business his own way. Okay? So that's really all I wanted to say about that. And these, you know, again, I'm going to keep saying it. Let's just make it a thing. If I say it, you know it's facts. <laughs> so now he's not leaving such a beautiful situation. But Also with the complex thing, I think Joe also realized they were making content for the clout generation. At that point, they're eating out the palm of my hands. They're basically, I'm covering them all, all the time. Joe necessarily isn't really communicating or talking about people like Yachty all day. And I think they probably did some cost risk assessment and they're like, okay, let's just, while Joe is there, I'll give you, I'll be honest with y'all. While Joe is there, Complex treated Joe like he was king. And I was like, ah, you the prince. When Joe left, they looked at me like, oh, well, you're the king now. So of course, I'm a businessman. I wasn't the priority number one when Joe was here. But now that Joe has left, I am priority number one. I'm the head on Joe. So cool, when I tell y'all I want this, it's going to happen. You understand why I stayed? It's business, people. In me. And I was doubtful. He's seen me when it was me against the company. It was me against him. Right. Me in action. So and he expressed that in the video. It's Which easier for like him. He's able to read. And he's an entrepreneur. I was going to say, and he does so, this. He does this. So He's able to read the fucking tea leaves, man. And that's an important piece. That's an important piece. So when we get to transparency. Now, do, wait, before you get there, uh, did you feed ACK information? Because I think that's been an accusation. No. Okay. I have not spoken to academics. I don't speak to ACK like that. Mm. There's a mutual respect there. Sure. Because that's my man. We work together. They both helped each other out. We, and deeper than that, if I'm getting into the, the, the psychology of it, mm. me in 2001 and what I stood for versus the industry in 2001, the result of that is academics. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Being that you were uh, early to the internet game and shit like that. That might have slipped over a few people's heads. Let me explain what he's saying. He's not trying to soldier boy everything. What he's saying is that the way how the way how I talk about like there's a thing about like just my stance on things that's just like fuck the industry like we got our own movement and yes we have realized how we could operate despite of the industry that was Joe at one point except I think he was before the audience that I've built up. Like, a lot of stuff you hear me talk about now and, and try to put out there, expose. Everybody in the industry doesn't want that to happen. So I think Joe sees that and be like, you're fighting the same fight I was fighting, except I didn't have that militia to the standard of you to do it now. It's a reason why when any rapper says anything about me, yo, you know going up against someone as like a Nicki Minaj or a Meek Mill for media in 2000 was career or platform ending is suicide. Shit for Joe Budden going up against a big label like Def Jam going up against a Jay-Z career suicide as well. I think that's where he sees some of the, the, um, the parallels and I agree. That, okay, I can see that. Parallel. I was him. Uh-huh. I was him right. in 01, right. in 02, in 03, mm. around the street niggas and the killers. Why is this guy on chat rooms? <laughs> why is this guy screaming, where's the social digital marketing team? Why is this guy, why is he dancing in the club even? <laughs> why is he blogging? Why is he this? Why is he this? It's, it was a, a, a meeting of the 
a meeting of this. So 20 years later, when you see Act, when you see Adam 22, when you see all of these dudes, mm. some of the young entrepreneurs that, hey, Joe, I see what you're doing, and I'm not coming to sign with you because I'm doing the same thing you're doing. That is the result of the work. Yeah, I heard Adam 22 say it a lot in, in your conversation with him. Hey, some people love that interview. Some people hate it. Listen, it wasn't a normal interview. It was two masterminds. Sitting there, playing chess. Y'all were playing jousting, chess. Yeah. and it was a mutual respect between us both. So we're not even gonna do, we're not even gonna turn it up like we know how to turn it up. Because right. you, my man, right. that exists. Right. That exists, right? Where am I in the story here? Where uh, am I here in the story? The emails. And- I have not spoken. Listen, I have not spoken to Rory or Maul since our last part. Nor have I. Uh, and shout out to Flower. I said happy birthday to Rory. Actually, I want to say shout out to Flower Lotus Queen. I think I'm getting. That. By the way, I would I would have called Joe even right. I haven't I really haven't talked to Joe in weeks. I would call Joe right now, but I don't even know if he's watching or whatever. And also, like, I know he does that on his podcast. He'll call people live. I don't want to just put him on the spot at all. And also, yo, I I feel so bad like asking people like yo yo what's going on? You good? It feels like it's like they look at me the media guy like they'll probably think I'm just trying to fish for information. Anyway, let's get past that a little bit because uh, I, I know y'all want the shit. We, we're not gonna listen to the whole thing again. If you want to hear the whole thing. Please go to, uh, I'm going to put it on the screen. Joe, let me open another tab. I'll go with this one. Joe Budden Podcast Patreon, okay? I want to, I wanna, while we have about 20,000 people in here, from, from a, a, a homie, a brother, a black brother, building a great business, a great you know podcast network, I don't want to be the person who's taking a dollar out of his mouth at all. Please go here. Only go here if you fuck. You got to like him. But if you want to hear Joe Button content, and by the way, somehow Joe always creates a spectacle. Joe is surrounded with drama. Joe's life is loving hip-hop. His business is loving hip-hop. But if you want all of this uncensored, he's on Patreon. You can get it for little as five dollars, or if you're really a super fan and you want to get in the Discord and all that shit, go get it. He got twenty five dollar joints up there as well. But I'm gonna leave. Uh, I'm gonna from time to time show this because I feel bad using his content. I think this is a Patreon exclusive. I don't want to use his content without showing him the love, honestly. Okay, it's a black business, man. It's an upcoming business, man. And and if you a chat nigga. Joe Bunn showed us no slander. He loves the chat. He loves the chat. He, you'll hear him acknowledge the issues between me and Ruri has nothing to do with him. If anything, he talked to them about it, not me. If you're one of the fans who thinks that Joe should have came out and said, fuck act after Ruri went to his crib. Come on. You're an idiot. Okay. Um, let's, let's get to the bullshit. Cause I know, listen, I want the bullshit too. I want the bullshit. Let's go. Either one of them. I made a bet that they wouldn't get here. I was watching the reaction vids. When I watched the vid back, it was a few really important details left out that we'll uncover today. Ooh, the suspense. You're on the edge of your seat. Shout out to the day one listeners out there. I would call Joe. I like, <laughs> yo, Andrew Schultz. I see my brother. He said, act, yo, that, that twist. That Twitch stream on fire right now. Yo, Andrew, I had to bring it out, man. The Versace robe, you know what I mean? I'm cool in here. Listen, I, I got the diamond ring upstairs, too. You know what I mean? I got to show just a little opulence. It's nothing, too. You know what I mean? You got to let me know if I'm Miami ready, my brother. It's all good. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Anyway. It, we here today. Mm. If Joe's watching, he could text me and I call him. But, but like, I, yo, he said what he said on his pod. If you want to hear what he said, it's on his podcast. The elephant in the room is the magical A word, you guys. Come on. Remember, according to Rory and Mealy Maul, Rory the one who said he was more talented than Andrew Schultz. Can we even touch on that real quick? This is why y'all got to start respecting when people are building some shit. You know why I won't down Joe? Despite 
I don't think I don't know if Andrew's cool with it, but I don't care. I don't care about that. I want down Joe. Joe trying to build something. Andrew Schultz, I think he's hilarious. But even if you don't, you know I respect Andrew Schultz. He built something. Thank you for the fit. Watched him on Brilliant Idiots for years. I went to. I only ever won to, uh, uh, I don't know if, did I, did I meet, I, I think I did meet Andrew Schultz. Yeah, I did. We were kicking it. I went to a Brilliant Idiots live show. I didn't want to ask Charmin for taking, maybe Charmin was always cool, but I, I wanted to support genuinely. You know, I, I, I watched and I adored and I looked up to people like Charmin and how they did their thing. I never asked niggas for favors. You know, I don't ask niggas for favors because if shit go left, I don't want niggas to be like, you asked me for this, you asked me for this. Well, how could you? No, I never asked you for shit. I bought tickets, me and like my brothers and their friends. We went to the, the the podcast and I watched Andrew Schultz and, and Charlemagne do their thing live. Brilliant idiots. And I met Andrew Schultz afterwards. And at that point, I'm gonna be honest with you, I thought Andrew Schultz at that point was I said, yo, he's a good foil to Charlemagne. But Charlemagne is Charlemagne. He's just naturally he's a star. And I watched him stand up, I'm like, funny, but like what I know him for, he's a good fool to Charlemagne. Andrew Schultz eventually went on to do some dope shit. And now, not only is he on Netflix, he he built out, and this is where I'm talking about Rory again. You see Rory, you're here watching how the fuck you got fired on your day off, a day after your fucking birthday. And just go back to that conversation where you thought that you were more wittier, more funnier, whatever you thought you were more than Andrew Schultz. You know what you definitely aren't, even if you still think you're more wittier and funnier, you're not more of a hustler. The hip-hop community didn't know Andrew Schultz. A lot of people only knew him from maybe some MTV shit. You know what he did? He didn't sit there to be Charlemagne's sidekick and lackey for years, doing nothing to further his own brand. He took his own destinies in, in his few, in his hands, and he started branching out. Did a brilliant like I I think I even hit Charlamagne. I think I hit him directly on a. Yeah, he was doing some shit on on Instagram, IGTV. Brilliant. That's what he got the Netflix joint off. He started branching out. Brilliant. He developed a, a diff a whole different podcast. Who says you can only do one? He still does a po podcast with Charlamagne. He did another one. Brilliant. I'm watching. I'm like, oh, shit. Now he's in his bag. He found his stride because it's different when you have to. You're almost playing support. And it's different when you're the guy. People always ask me, yo, act. Why don't you be the guy on Twitch like when you're with Joe Budden? It's not the same thing. When I'm with Joe Budden, it's acting Joe. When I'm on Twitch, I'm in my bag. So I watched Andrew Schultz do that. But a nigga like Rory, and by the way, for everything they've done out of ill will and negativity about me, I only gave them advice. I told him, I said, yo, and I'm going to be honest, until this episode where Joe was spilling it all, I thought Joe had in his contract with them that they could never do another podcast or they can't talk outside of the podcast. Bro, even with the issues me and them, nigga, I would have brought them on my stream. Nigga, we could have met up and done... A podcast there, live. I told y'all. It would be me, Mealy Maw, and Rory. And I would 1v2 both of them niggas. Whatever points they got, let's talk. But the fact they never, ever jumped on that, they never, ever did anything else, they never established any word, they never tried to do shows anywhere, they were just always too cool for school. When you look at these bums, you look at basically... Jay-Z's leftovers. One is Jay-Z pre-coming and the other one, you know what I mean? He just thinks he's talking about the cloth like he's a fucking like he's a fucking tailor. The cloth I'm from, I, I don't know the cloth, the cloth. What are you talking about? But that's the big difference, and that's why I was offended. Because I watched somebody like Andrew Schultz go establish his worth by himself. Not only that, he was a comedian, so he was already doing his thing. But he gonna establish his worth. And these two bum ass things you're gonna notice. Y'all didn't wanna listen to it from me. Cause there's some people who are maybe Joe Button podcast fans or people that just hate me. You want the truth, but just 
the messenger counts, so you don't want to hear from Ak. Well, finally, Joe took off the gloves, and you heard it from him. Asshole. Come on, no. <laughs> no. No. Mm. Come on. Give it to me. You guessed it. Accounting? Accounting. Accounting. By the way, why y'all are so critical of Joe, y'all need to get the Stooges. Didn't they say, somebody sent me a screenshot of, I believe, that bum-ass nigga Ruri who's been moving off in motion ever since I called him a worker. He was on, I believe, Reddit. And he said, what we got going on ain't about money. Joe Button, y'all just heard him. He said, this is the elephant in the room, accounting. Now, y'all tell me, unless maybe my definitions are wrong, how could the issues be about accounting, but it's not about money? You have one nigga who's Jay-Z's pre-cum talking about respect, and the other nigga who's talking in circles because, truthfully, he's too embarrassed to tell you what the real issue is. Hey, it's a funny hey, accounting. And all of those... I took accounting classes. It uh, sucks. Accounting, man. That's the magical word that these brothers won't say. Mm. There's no secret to keep. I love transparency. Let's come in here and read all of the contracts. Mm. Yes. Accounting, you guys. Accounting. Let's crunch some numbers. <laughs> All that's happening now, in my opinion, and that's I can only speak from my perspective, seeds that have nasty seeds that have been planted years ago are just starting to bloom. Mm. They just starting to come to the surface. Some of the nasty seeds. Well, they're flowering. I think they came to the surface before, but I think they, the accounting doing has something. been used on the podcast before, so you can't say that they weren't bearing some fruit. Yo. Listen, man, light up a joint real quick. Blow that Ruri pack. That Ruri pack. Listen. We got the blackened malls and the Ruri runs. Roll your spliff up, everybody. Roll your spliff up. Just roll it up. Roll up. Listen, I don't care what you put in it. Get your blackened malls. Get your Ruri runs. Put it up. Light it up. And blow one in the air real quick while Joe ethers these niggas. Years. Mm. For three whole years. And then the Spotify deal popped up. Mm. But now that wasn't the first offer. Offer. You know, I've come in here and I've spoken about title deals, offers. Mm. I've spoken about offers, bar stool. I've spoken about offers. But none that you would ever really consider. A few just came and went. But we've come in here and we've discussed those things. But it wasn't until the Spotify deal... Can I make a quick aside on that, Please. if you don't mind? Because um, people see us or hear you talk about, oh, we turned down $30 million and turned down $10 million from Barcelona, whatever the fuck the numbers were, who gives a fuck? To most people, and maybe some people that were in the room at the time might be thinking, how and why? But they don't necessarily have the experience in doing My bad. Well, 
I'm an idiot. <laughs> I just need somebody to call me. Okay. <laughs> Apologize. Okay. Let me just say that again. This is where the two stooges made a very fatal error. You can clip this, put it on YouTube, whatever. I heard when they came back and they were on that episode that they just came back from strike. They said, Ruri, especially, he said, while he, his face is beat red, because there's some, you know, it's a little tint of embarrassment that's on him. He said, well, well, we did, like, isn't it the same when you were at Complex and you did what you did and blah, blah. He was equating what they're doing to what Joy's done. I'm here to tell y'all while they sit six feet below, Ruri, you're right. But this is a problem that I've had with Joe. And I, me and him, we've talked about this on the phone. I told Joe, I said, Joe, it's a little bit irresponsible what you be preaching when you say creator this, creator that, this and third. You know why I say irresponsible? Because you're letting, you're leading a narrative that people think that if you're a creator, they could go about things the way that you are. When I was at Complex with Joe, when Joe told me he was leaving, again, remember I thought he was playing chicken. Then he said, yo, act, I'm out of here. And when he told me, I said, no. I'm like, no, he's having I'm like, wait. I thought Joe was an idiot. I'm like, what the fuck? Bro, I was bewildered. I couldn't believe that Joe would walk away from that. I couldn't. I couldn't fucking believe it. By the way, I still don't agree with how he dealt with things. But that's what I've always still communicated to him. But you know what I've also said? When Joe is saying all his creative stuff and how he deals with stuff, please remember... Only you have to be the best or the second best or at least top three in the game to have rules not apply to you. Joe could leave Everyday Struggle, a show that people, I remember when they were comparing it to The Breakfast Club. Keep in mind, I was in college while The Breakfast Club was lit. It, I... It was uh, above the atmosphere feeling for me because I'm thinking, Jesus, I thought it would take a few years. It was only a few months. And they were like, oh, this is the new breakfast. And I was like, what? So I'm like, whatever to keep this going, let's go. At that point, I was so much about content and maybe even, remember remember Complex sent us to LA without security? Vic Mensa wilding out of I was so much about let's keep it fucking going. If Complex had said, hey, the next interview y'all got is in Iraq, I would have been like, yo, Joe, you down? And if he said, yeah, I'm like, all right, fuck, are we going? I was with it. I'm about it. Let's go. Joe put his heart in. I'm putting my heart in it. If a nigga want to be my ass, he want to be his ass. Let's go. We roll with the punches. Let's fucking go. I want it to be the best. I want it to be legendary. Joe wanted to as well. When he was walking away, I was like, no fucking way. I was like, yo, Joe is making the biggest mistake. But then my thought about that turned to hurt because Joe told me while me and him would talk, he said, yo, Complex could have kept me and I, I was really hurt at them for a while. Then I realized the inevitable truth. What you think is going to happen and what can happen doesn't apply when you have someone who is a sensational talent. The rules of the NBA is cool, but if it's LeBron, you might have to look like, oh, we don't know. And that's what happened. I didn't think Joe was going to have another like super successful moment, but he did. He did it like two, three times. That's what Joe is. These dudes actually thought they were Joe. They thought they could stick up a company. They thought they could shake the tree. 
they thought they could not show up. By the way, Joe did these things. Now, granted, when he didn't show up, he didn't show up on a Friday, which he wasn't already contracted to work. But they were kind of doing it, right? Like, if they're not showing up to Patreon, maybe they're contracting to include on Patreon. Okay, cool. Here's the thing. When Complex said, and I remember when Complex told me, they said, yo, act. They had a meeting with me. They said, act. Love you. You've been great. We're going to keep working through everything. We want to give you everything you want. But are you down to keep going and be the face of the show with Joe being gone? Are you cool with that? Because we're down to bet our chips on you. And I was like, hmm. I looked at the cost and the, the cost benefit. I'm like, well, me and Joe has something that was spectacular. If it's not spectacular anymore, people are going to think that maybe, like, I'm the problem. Like, it, people are going to say it doesn't look the same. Like, you know, like, I'm, I'm doing a lot of cost risk, you know, assessment and evaluation. But even then, I'm looking at you like, what the fuck are you doing? Anyway, I say all that to say, there's certain people who could do that type of shit. And this is what I'm trying to tell the students. Y'all sat close to Joe and watched him do shit that only he could do. I promise you. There will be nobody in the culture that goes to Spotify, goes to Apple Music, goes to Tidal, goes to Amazon Music, and then do or leave in any type of fashion close to Joe and then have someone of a semblance of a career. The point I'm trying to say is that these fucking idiots should have realized that you can't follow a nigga who literally he knows that he could create value and worth Anywhere on God's green earth, give him a mic. Y'all are not that. Another reason why I leave Complex like that, that was my first introduction to the quote-unquote industry. If I shit on Complex, by the way, this is like Joe's 10th thing. If I shit on Complex, that might be also an echo chamber to everybody in the industry. Don't fuck with Act. The first time the industry tried to fuck with him, he shit on them. It's a lot of cost risk assessment. Let me keep playing a little bit. I'm going to skip through a little bit more. To understand why you might not take that. That was well said. Okay. Carry on. Sorry. And the bar studio wasn't nowhere near there. <laughs> no, well, I, don't, I don't remember what the fucking numbers were. Who gives a shit? See, but I remember things that I shouldn't remember. And I should probably start back even further than that. We were in Detroit, me and Slaughterhouse told the story here too. And we were talking about, let's get to the disrespect, man. Y'all want to see disrespect? One in the chat or spam the scorpion emoji. If y'all ready for the violation, take the kid gloves off. By the way, Joe, where I blame you in all of this, because you... Talk to these niggas like you were friends. You never talk to me like that. You talk to me like, act, you show up to do your job, I show up to do my job. And if that meant you telling me or having tough love, like, hey, if I can't do this, get him out of here. You think I didn't hear that? You think the desk didn't hear that? You think that was received well? You think for a while we weren't like, oh, yo, damn. That's fucking business. Only these two dweebs gets to be like, no, coddle me like a baby. No, don't, don't talk to me like, no, don't tell me, don't tell me that I'm challenging you to fight every 20 seconds, but I should not show up. What? In what world does that exist? Salute to my man Van Lathan. He got fired from TMZ, or uh, I don't know if it was fired, but but he was let go. Because, jokingly, he made somewhat of an expression towards another co-worker. They said he was aggressive. This aggressive Negro in the workplace uh, that's fucking up everything. He looks like he has some a lot of aggression. Let's get him out of here. But when it comes to Joe, a nigga saying, yo, listen, man, yo, we can go outside every 20 minutes. It's, uh, well, that's your homie. Okay. 
Let's get straight to him talking about that bum ass nigga, okay? I think it's right here. I think it's right here. Hold on. I'm also seeing people, if you know me, I trust plans and friendship. Mm. I'm going to find it. Minds require way more than. In one moment, no need. I've done this before. Is abandonment. He's speaking about Mealy Mall. Found a way to say it. <laughs> Give my credit, nigga. Found a way to say it. Maul and I have gone through abandonment. Mm. Maul, back to patterns. By the way, the abandonment he's talking about that Mealy Mall is going through. Jay Z abandoned that bum ass nigga in a fucking sock, in a napkin. Okay, that's Jay Z's pre cum. Jay Z abandoned that bum ass nigga. We don't even know how he alive. Okay, so that's the abandonment that my nigga Joe talking about with that Mealy Mall nigga. I've never addressed it. When he came back to this pod, when no, when he started the pod, mm. episode seventy seven. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know if he lived in New York. I remember. Well, because he was bouncing around. Uh, Don't matter. Yeah. I didn't know where he lived is where the communication was. Basically, it was Tommy from Martin. Nobody knew what the fuck he was doing. I'll tell you, though, Joe, I'll fill in the timeline. He was sucking dick and swinging from nutsack to nutsack all through the Rockefeller headquarters, all through Rock Nation, claiming his brother is so-and-so and so-and-so. The dick sucking, the balls rubbing, the anal lubrication that this bum ass nigga was applying. That's where he was residing. Joe, take the gloves off with these bums. Everything with you except for one thing that's really important. We've never broke bread. Essentially what Joe is saying, that bum ass nigga Mealy Maul was a broke ass nigga when he came. I, I think I forgot to play the part where somebody said, "Oh, you and Mealy Maul was living together." You know, you know what Joe clarified? That bum was living with me. These are the niggas that later on joined something that was on the road to success. You were you showed up when it's already on the path of success or successful. And you're talking about you want to be owning shit. You're talking about you want to decide shit. Are you fucking dumb or you're stupid? Mm -hmm. And not really patterns because humans get into this. Got to take care of their self mode. Of course, but survival, I've seen, survival, I've, survival. but I've seen Maul get into that mode. And we never addressed it. Let's get real here. We we here today. Him and I have never addressed it. When he came back to this pod, when no, when he started the pod, mm. episode seventy seven. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know if he lived in New York. Okay. Joe didn't even know if this thing was homeless or not. The fuck is that doing? These were two bombs! That he was in a place that he could continue this. Right. But he did. Awesome. Him and I have never had a conversation where I would think that the owners, where ownership was exchanged. It's never even come up. Didn't I tell you this bum's been trying to be too cool for school? The cloth, the cloth, the cloth. Shut your bum ass up. You said you don't care about potting. Then you want to talk about potting business. It doesn't make sense. Well, I've been through everything with you except for one thing that's really important. We've never broke bread. We've never broke bread. Chat, somebody donate me, man. We finna take some shots. And what they do for a living, where they get their money from, how their relationship is. You know niggas. Yeah. We don't really, you know what I mean? I've never really needed to. Right. You've always lived with me. Mm. Not live together. You live with me, nigga. Mealy Mall, I got six bedrooms in here, nigga. 7,500 square feet. 
in a garage could fit multiple cars, nigga. You could come. Well, you can't come live with me. You got to be a worker. And kept it in your room. Huh, hold up. What'd Joe say? Huh, wait a minute. Well, because he was bouncing around. Uh, Don't matter. Yeah. I Essentially, yo, salute to my nigga Parks. Even he's saying that nigga Mealy Moore was a fucking bum. Mealy Moore, the next time you speak, nigga, how the fuck you be talking about you like a hair to Rock Nation royalty and you was a fucking bum trying to live with a rapper that wasn't that popping? How the fuck you trying to give advice on business? Your brother was what to Rockefeller, nigga? But you trying to live with Joe Budden? What you niggas on? I want both you niggas to come on and give a public apology to all the people you've misled with your fuckery. You let a bunch of, and by the way, to the 40 plus niggas who be watching, yeah, you hate to see a nigga like me, right? I get it. Your bum ass who was looking at Ruri and Mealy Maul thinking that they were trying to give, oh, they got it all figured out. Look who's right now. You know, I start showing the cars, the crib, and I show more just to let y'all niggas know that the people you are listening to, I don't take crypto advice from a broke nigga. I can't take advice on how to come up if a nigga ain't did shit. I hate the niggas who sell shit who claim they're like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, if you buy this, I'm going to teach you to get rich. But you not rich. How you not rich? How the niggas going to tell you about business? They business not right. My shit ain't right. My shit is beautiful. So y'all got to come up with another reason to dislike me. Oh, he corny. He a cornball. We wouldn't hang out with him. You hang out with the bum ass niggas. I want to hang out with. Matter of fact, I just, fuck hanging out with people. I just want to keep ascending. There's a lot of y'all. I know y'all. I'll read y'all comments. Y'all mad. Yo, yo, how did Rory in that bitch? That's what social media is, nigga. Y'all been praising false idols. That's the same niggas who watch me do everything I do and think I've been grinding. But it's them, it's them bums that people been listening to. And this is why I recently, if you want to, yo, why act? You kind of flexing more, showing more. You know, I started talking financial shit to my audience. Because if I don't, they're going to listen to niggas like that. Ruri splitting the rent with his girl. Mealy Moore was just living with Joe Budden before he, like, Joe dipped. Like, these niggas ain't niggas you could look up to, bruh. How dare you listen to them niggas even talk about niggas like me? Trust me, if there was something that could prove about me, it would be out. I bought this house cash. My Lambo cash. My R8 cash. My G-Wagon cash. If there was anything that was wavering, if there was something, if they could find a lease, if they could find a, a, a finance, they would do it. They can't. I just paid 30 grand and putting a basketball court over there. I just paid for another 10 grand and putting fucking speakers around my fucking pool. Yes, Ruri, you can still do my pool. Turn my shit into saltwater shit, man. I'm in there, bitch. What I'm trying to tell y'all is that y'all old bum ass niggas, y'all go, I'm going to force y'all to know who's winning. I'm going to force y'all. If y'all think I'm going to sit back and just be humbling, I don't care about your validation. I care about embarrassing y'all niggas. One thing y'all won't ever say is that y'all did it whatever way. Go suck Jay-Z dick all you want. I'm going to still have more money than you because he not going to give you shit. He going to give you game that you can't execute, nigga. He gonna give you, he gonna talk to you like you a bitch. But if you wanna be an independent boss, like I am, you don't need another nigga. I was on Clubhouse, nigga said, act, you can't get in the room these niggas is in. What use is a room if they don't got what I got? What the fuck is the use? Y'all niggas tell me. All y'all tell me. I 
I did my time on the little leagues. I've grounded. I still be putting in work. But when I came up, I ain't taking shit from nobody. There's not a media personality that can little nigga me no more. And I'm not only doing this for me, for the new niggas who's coming up. They might pop on TikTok. They might pop on some other app. They might, they start doing their thing. You don't need an act. You don't need a Joe Button. You don't need a Charlemagne. You don't need an iHeart. You don't need a Hot 97. You don't need shit. Do your thing. And when niggas start talking that old shit, tell them to suck dick. You don't need to pay respect to Jay-Z, Drake, none of these niggas. So when y'all see me flexing, y'all see me violating, it's not because of me. Because I was a person. And by the way, one of the reasons I never even moved out of Jersey, I said, oh, man, I got to stay close to me. You know, Hot 97 Day in New York. They the you could be in Canada taking the shit over. You could be in UK taking the shit over. I popped off. I was covering Chicago. I was in Jersey. Still in Jersey. But one thing I won't ever have is these old niggas who's be talking in. Bro, Jay-Z was sub dissing niggas like Jim Jones and other people like 20 years ago. Y'all still doing that? That's how these bozos still be doing. They're subtweeting like bitches. Except y'all subtweeting without a job. When I'm showing y'all the lifestyle now, is what I'm going to show y'all that this is the way you win. You want to get fired publicly and embarrassed? Your chick beating your ass? People looking like you are like a bitch? Your side chick getting fucked by your ops? You going to be like them. That's the cloth you want to be in? Go be like them. But the chat niggas, what I represent, the new age, where we don't need no goddamn niggas' permission. You gonna get down and lay down. Facts. If you respect me or not, you heard what I Floyd said the best thing one time. Because niggas was always on his dick too when he was doing his thing. He said, nigga, legacy can't pay my fucking bills, nigga. I'm telling y'all niggas now. For all y'all niggas, oh, so and so don't respect. Nigga, I don't give a fuck about none of them niggas. I came and I changed the game. Niggas like Soldier Boy came in and changed the game. Joe changed the game. Bro, we don't... Nigga, the stone that the builder refused became the head cornerstone. They kicked Joe out of fucking music. He's the biggest voice in, 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 in just a conversation right now. They don't gotta wanna chill with me. They gotta deal with me. That's the... That's the thing I've been preaching. That's my mission. That's a fact. But the people y'all idolize are these two bozos. Niggas like this who talk about the cloth. What fucking cloth? And I ain't talking to my audience because they know what it is. I'm talking about if you from the Joe Bun podcast, you a regular nigga in hip-hop, what fucking cloth do you respect these niggas from? Because they could talk to Jay-Z. Nigga, I don't give a fuck about talking to Jay-Z, nigga. Or you want me to flex out talk to Drake? Nigga, if Drake don't ever talk to me, I don't got to talk to that nigga either. I ain't come here to suck no rapper's dick. Facts. If I fuck with you, I fuck with you. If I get mutual respect, cool. But I'm going to change how media is. When, when Meek Mill and them niggas tried to act like they was going to boss me around, nigga, fuck out of here, nigga. Not going to happen, not with me. You get industry dick suckers like Mealy Moore, been sucking cock ever since birth. He, he Jay-Z pre -cum. He might have came out from somebody's cock being sucked. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. So when I'm breaking shit down, and this is where it got them in their feelings. You niggas ain't like me. I seen Joe do Adam 22. I'm going to tell y'all this. Newsflash, Joe got a different type of respect because this is why Joe ain't no dinosaur. Joe Joe been doing block TV, all that type of shit. Joe did Love and Hip Hop before Love and Hip Hop. Joe did all type of shit before all that type of shit. But you know what? Joe could realize what Adam 22 is doing. He's like, I might not agree with everything you do, but... I see how you 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 manipulating and working shit. That thing is smart. 
Niggas like Rory and Mealy Maul, the reason we putting them in the dirt is not because Joe hired them. Joe wasn't giving them shit in comparison. You know why I show the lifestyle? I donate a million dollars to charity right now if any one of them could show that they was making more money than I spent on my Lambo. In a year. But I didn't buy one car in a year. I bought two. What I'm trying to say is that when you a bitch like them niggas, you ain't ever going to be on the same level like me. I want to encourage people to go get your, if you into media, if you into some other shit, go build yourself up as a boss before you start fucking with this other shit. It's going to change you. But y'all always taking me as a joke. Because you know what a running joke was? Oh, he's in the small ass room. Yo he's, yo, he's on Twitch. I promise you. And this is, I'll get this on record. I got 100000 that Twitch pay me more as a contract, as a guaranteed contract, more than them niggas was getting from Joe. Facts. This is a fact. But when they used to talk about Twitch, it was like, oh, he's just dr Nigga, I choose to be in the state that I'm in. I like to kick it and drink. You know when I had conversations, we signed a, again, a lucrative contract. Them niggas know how I'm going to give it up. Nigga, you can't tell me how to do it. I'm going to do me. If I ain't going to do me on your platform, I'll do me on another platform. Cool. I want, I'm putting this out there to the world. Stop respecting bitch ass niggas like Mealy Maul and Rory. All they do is suck dick daily. The reason why the Joe Bun podcast been lit with the new niggas is because they're not protecting a bunch of niggas, bro. You know what niggas be like, yo, I can start a bunch of problems? Bro, because I'm loyal to the fans. You know how many of these niggas try to be friends with me? They all want to be homies after a while. Because they want favorable shit. Oh, act, don't, don't talk about that. Don't report that. No, 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 yo, act, you know, you my homie. Who do I owe my shit to? You think I came in this shit to be cool? Them niggas came in to flex the chicks that they knew Jay-Z. I came in this shit to be like, yo, everybody who was in my audience base, I was them at one point. And if not for anything, I could go out and say, I gave them as much as I could give them about what was really going on behind this shit. And if it goes to hell, you know, niggas used to be scared of Jay and this and third. Niggas, some of the way I talk about Jay, I never talked to them in my life, by the way. Nothing wrong with it. They ain't got no problem with it. Nigga, didn't, wasn't the whole thing that Jay got Charlamagne fired? Bro, it's not in your best interest to be negative or critical of Jay. But you know how I'm going to be, how I'm going to give it up? My audience want the real in my perspective. I don't give a fuck who it is. Beyonce, Jay-Z, I don't give a fuck. Y'all not going to get that nowhere else. But mostly I like dick suckers like these niggas who only talk about the cloth. The cloth from the cloth I'm from. The cloth I'm... Nigga, what cloth you from, nigga? Mealy Mo, you gonna hear Joe say you used to hide detergent in your fucking room, nigga? You was a bum! You was a bum-ass nigga hiding detergent from the nigga who gave you room and board! And niggas like you was allowed to talk to the culture like you had some pulse on the shit. When y'all niggas used to criticize me and, and dissect me, y'all thought I would be out of here just like, I ain't gonna lie, a lot of them niggas who came in the clout era, they disappeared. I've been getting on their ass recently as well. Y'all know. Y'all thought like, okay, cool. Yo, he, he part of the 2017 crowd, 2016. Yo, he be out of here in like, 2019 we'll we'll talk about yo hey what happened to bozos like academics false mealy more and ruri let me give you the, the perspective of shit i've had a bigger audience than you have had access to before you even heard of me so if you thought you was gonna see a fad passing I hope you thought about it again. And even with your firing, and I'm pretty sure you're probably thinking, oh, we got to, me and Mealy Mole, and let's go link up with someone else. You made a fatal fucking error, nigga. Because there's been times in my life where niggas try to bully me. 
and I consider this one of them. And I remember in, in high school when niggas tried, to, tried me, and I was a little in tears, but I fought back. When I'm fucking y'all niggas up now, and I'm violating you and your fucking wedding ring is sitting there in a box, and you looking sad as fuck with your little dog, and you wonder why academics ruined your life. Yeah, I consider that fighting back as well. Should never show it to my fucking crib, you dumbass nigga. Hold up, man. Let's get straight to the violation, man. Yo, hey, if anybody need a water break, I'll give you a pause. Y'all get a water break. I know we got like 18, 19,000 in here. We ain't going nowhere. I got, I'm dissecting this. I'm breaking this shit down like a fraction. I'm telling y'all this right now. That bum Rui will never speak my name for the rest of his existence. Joe took it light on them. Even today, he took the gloves off, but he still kept it light. Joe, I'm going to tell them and even you what everybody should have known. Joe, you let niggas come on your platform hijack it and gain sympathy while they threw you under the bus as some type of nurse. Listen to this forever. He ain't changing. Ain't nothing gonna happen. Hey, it's one of those things. Listen, some of the people, I like artists. I won't even name names. Some of my artists, I think make really good music, but they're murderers. They're like, what do I do? Like, it's like oh, uh, hopefully stop being a murderer. And, no, it's part of it, nigga. I'm sorry. You like it? You, you like it? Sure or not? Let's keep it going, chat. Y'all not tired, right? I ain't come. I know we got a lot of hip hop shit to talk about. I ain't got nothing else to talk about. We're at the funeral. I spat on their casket a couple of times. The next thing, I need to take a piss on their caskets. Next. Let's keep listening. I didn't know where he lived, is where the communication Holy. was. I was not certain that he was in a place that he could continue this. But he did. Awesome. Him and I have never had a conversation where I would think that the owner, where ownership was exchanged. It's never even come up mm. between him and I. Mm. But he was here, and that's my brother, and we've been through everything, and I was so happy that we just kept going. Love more. Of course I love more. I was coming in here to I say... Maul, I've been through everything with you except for one thing that's really important. We've never broke bread. We've never broke bread. We've never had to. Oh, man. I don't really ask Love my me. mans what they do for a living, where they get their money from, how they relationship. Joe, with. I'll fill you in, man. I know you know you ain't know where, 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 where Mealy Maul got his couple of coins from. It's from sucking dick. A industry dick sucker, the nigga who still is 2021, he's still talking Rockefeller. No disrespect. Jay-Z is great. He's amazing. He's a legend. He's one of the best ever. But we're not talking Rock Rockefeller now. We might say Rock Nation. Rockefeller? You know what Nas said? Rockefeller died of AIDS, nigga. That was the end of the chapter. Shit, that's the shit. Y'all still claiming... And y'all named y'all company after? Yo, stop it. We don't give a fuck about no Rockefeller in 2021, bruh. And by the way, I spoke to people at Rock Nation. They're not even claiming ball. <laughs> I talked to them. I said, yo, what's up? And so, uh, what's going on? I said, yo, I get it. Y'all got the dream chases over there. Meek and his team, which Meek got egg on his face. Meek, your team paid me 30 grand already to promote your artist. It's fine. I think you made an announcement on the desk like, hold up, wait a minute. Don't pay no academic stuff. I'm like, I got you. Cool. They haven't hit me up no more about Rock Nation artists. What's up? Kerr, I fuck with you, though. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I ain't shit. Um, anyway. Um, what was I saying? Outside of that. I said, yo. Yo, who is this Mealy Maul nigga? Will this affect anything that we have to deal with? You know what they said? Um, no. Like, we don't even know who that is. <laughs> so he told me. I said, you sure? I said, I do business with people, but if y'all try to lie and me and Mealy Maul get into it, I'm exposing shit. They said, trust me. 
we don't we know he's like he's like a cousin or something to somebody. We don't he doesn't deal with none of our business. All of our shit is direct. I'm like, I respect it. I respect it. Let's keep it going. Said I want to raise. Neither one of them have said what. Trust. Yeah. Let's go back. One. I need y'all to hear Communication. It. I need y'all to hear That's this. a big one. I need y'all to hear These are the niggas. By the way, you niggas that be watching Joe Budden that's 40 plus, this is your heroes. I got their head on a stake. This is your heroes, bitch. Mm. I psychoanalyze my friendships. And in doing so with more. Let me show y'all how the chat niggas give it up. Because y'all was dick sucking and listening to bums what this the reality. Amen. We've done this. We've done that. We've done it all. You guys lived together for how many years? He Listen. lived with me for a certain amount of years. Uh -huh. my, my position in his life has always been one of protection. And open arms. That's your fucking heroes, you 40 plus crowd. Transactional from way back yonder, that has been one way. And one unfortunately, one of the things that we have dealt with in our relationship that the therapist would want to uncover if she was here and I thought about Listen. calling one, no need, I've done this before, is abandonment. Found a way to say it. <laughs> Give my credit, nigga. Found a way to say it. Maul and I have gone through abandonment. I sit before you holding these bum ass niggas head on a stake and anybody who follows them. You bozos, I take all y'all on together. Get into this, gotta take care of this self mode. Of course. But survival, I've seen I've, of... but I've seen Maul get into that mode. And we never addressed it. Let's get real here. We we here today. Him and I have never addressed it. When he came back to this pod, when no, when he started the pod. Episode 77. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know if he lived in New York. You didn't even know if he had a house! Well, because he was bouncing around. Uh, he it was a bomb! I didn't know where he lived is where the communication was. Mm. You didn't even know if it was a bum, Joe. I'm going to correct it. Yo, Joe, you got to get at these things aggressively. Could continue this. Right. But he did. Awesome. Him and I have never had a conversation where I would think that the owner, where ownership was exchanged. It's never even come up mm. between him and I. Mm. But he was here, and that's my brother, and we've been through everything, and I was so happy that we just kept going. Love Maul. Of course I love Maul. I was coming in here to say, Maul. Maul, I've been through everything with you except for one thing that's really important. We've never broke bread. You know why? You're a bum. Your worth to Joe before this was never bringing in money, helping him get money. You were a leech. How much times I gotta tell y'all that? All you dick suckers of ruling them all, they were leeches. Tell me otherwise. When you left, Ma, I love you, and I would say this if you were here, but I didn't know you weren't coming. When you left, you left as the guy that bought detergent and kept it in your room. Pause this shit! This the type of bomb we're dealing with! Y'all king lived with another man for free! And bought detergent and fucking hid it in his room like a bitch. That's your king. That's your king. That's the nigga who listening for business. You see why you bozos who listen to that hasn't turned out to shit. You see my chat niggas who listen to me. I teach them from their young. From your 15, 16. Let's be entrepreneurs. Let's be bosses. Let's get into crypto. Let's own our own business. All my meme pages, they making thousands. I've been saying it. My meme pages make more than them bum-ass niggas. I don't take a coin. 
Go follow all my chat nigga accounts. Grand Wizard, what up? Henny Demix, what up? Block A, what up? All my chat nigga pages who don't know the movement of academics. We revolutionize digital shit. YouTube, Instagram, Twitch. I don't be in their pockets. Ask all of them. I've negotiated and say, yo, I'll stand and rep them. Give them more money. I want them to be rich like me. I don't want to be the only nigga showing off Lambos and big houses and cars. That's how I roll. But you've been listening to these dumbass niggas doubt me and cut. Oh, I, yo, I could just getting drunk on a stream. Are you fucking stupid, nigga? It's a $2 million house. I was paid for cash. I could show you the wire transfer. I wired it out my account cash. I don't rent. I got, I, sh I post, I only post my titles for the RA and the Lambo just to let y'all know you can keep tab of my life. I'm not lying to y'all. Lambo was 300,000. The RA was like 230, it was about like 250 with tax, but fuck it. Y'all niggas have sat here and y'all old niggas. That's what I'm talking to the niggas who have subscribed to them niggas. The niggas will be like, oh, I don't fuck with Ack. Like, you don't fuck with Ack, but you fuck with a loser. And you wonder why you're 40 plus talking about your IRAs and, yo, what about your retirement fund? I got a young audience that fuck with me. You know what I be talking to them about all the time? Investments. Let's try to make sure they're not ending up broke. Let's try to help them out. Let's try to make sure they're going up. I didn't need... Spotify, nobody else to give me money to give my audience. Ask about what I've done on Christmas for my audience in the last couple of years. Yo, hey, here's a hundred, here's a thousand, here's five hundred. Ask my niggas, I gave them shit. Oh, you in college? I take that. And I'm the nigga y'all try to vilify. Y'all got an albino bum. Never did shit for the fucking culture. Literally, he's an idiot. Y'all been praising that nigga. Acting like I can't really. That's one of the reasons I be always looking around like, yo, they're praising niggas for shit that have never even done what I've done. I don't want credit for some of these things. Y'all can have a mixed feeling about me. Okay, oh, you did it with Char Ratchet. Okay, nigga, now that I'm up, I'm down to contribute. I'm working with people in Chicago. Let's let's figure this out. Let's let's see how I could be a positive person and how I could use my platform, what I built to help. You don't see from them niggas. Y'all still slander me. Y'all listen to the them. How? My chat niggas don't, but it's our old niggas. That's what I'm gonna violate all y'all and I'm gonna take my time on this. Y'all could all leave. It could be one person up in this. I'm gonna keep the stream going on. I wanna show y'all. This has been my life mission. Because on social media, on Twitter and everything, they painted me as this guy. As, oh, Ak is just the worst person. Bro, I'm black just like y'all. I'm a human. I made mistakes. I grew. I have an audience. They have a certain perspective. I'm trying to figure this shit out. I want to be, I want to make them in better positions. But I also, if I cause damage or whatever, I want to fix that shit. Niggas never gave me a chance. Bum ass niggas like Ruri and Mealy Mo, they try to dance on, hopefully, they were hoping it was my grave. Oh, yeah, Ack is down bad. Hey, yeah, that nigga dumb as shit. But they ain't expect when a nigga just fucking kick the door off the shit and said, fuck that. It ain't about, them niggas will never ever have more, them niggas will never earn as much money I've earned this far. That's not the, that's not the case. That's not why we arguing. I want to show y'all that when y'all thinking about, because they keep talking about certain shit that be confusing the public. Oh, I'm from this cloth. I'm from this. What have they done? Y'all taking their word and advice about business, but they ain't done shit. How? Nigga, hold me accountable. I'm showing y'all. I'm not here bitching about shit. I've gotten offered millions of dollars. I've walked away from millions of dollars. I've taken millions of dollars. I've won and I've lost. I do it both, but I do it in the public's eye. My audience builds me. It keeps my relevance.
And if I fuck up today, I hope that they'll hold and lift me up for tomorrow. That's how it is. I try to be transparent. Y'all don't got to like me. But I want to show y'all these are y'all heroes. These are y'all heroes. And I'm holding their heads up on a stake to say, bitch, the fuck you got to say now. Ruri for the last six months been piggybacking off the Joe Bun podcast, hoping to sell a fucking album and hoping his management situation with some shit called Emotional Oranges could use, he could benefit off a black niggas platform to push that shit on y'all. Y'all don't require him to do shit. But of course, act, because y'all don't fuck with act like that. Yeah, act, you gotta, it's okay, I'll take all that. But it comes moments and times like this. What you finna say now? And don't be a hypocrite. Joe's a black creator. He's trying to create something. We've seen it. I've seen it at Spotify. I've seen it at different places. Yo, they do value people who got podcast networks. Joe trying to build one. Charlemagne built his. But you going to just shit on him? Because what? what was you going to shit on him? You don't see me shit on him. I'm like, all right, I see you. I see you trying to do your thing. That's what I'm encouraging. I go, go, go support him. I know how hard it is to build a business. You y'all listen to the bums who never build shit. Y'all get mad at niggas like me, niggas like Joe, who when their heart, their soul, they their time is committed to some shit, and they're trying to convey to y'all like, yo, this is what I had to do. Y'all look at him like, yo, oh, you, oh, you a bad friend, nigga. I just dedicated my whole life to some shit. Y'all y'all call it friendship? That's what y'all called it? Joe a better man than me. And that's why I love my chat niggas. But, but here's the thing. I also put this out for my chat niggas as well because I haven't introduced too many individuals that's been around all the way constantly like them bozos was around for Joe. And I promise you, if niggas, if my old audience switched up for niggas who I was trying to help and never sacrificed as much for me, I would be hurt. 100%. That's a fact. You got... That Bozo Ruri just graduated from college. He feels so entitled. He listened to Joe and thought everything Joe was saying would also apply to him. That's not true. He wasn't there even from the beginning. You ain't helped Joe come up with this idea. You ain't here to help brainstorm. I told y'all the story. I, I, I was on every episode of Everyday Struggle. I was probably on four times the amount of episodes as Joe. But if you ask me if there was ownership to be given, do I say I deserve it? Do I say Joe deserve it? Joe. Joe was already there. He helped come up with a concept. He helped come up with a format. He helped figure out what it's going to be before I got there. I took the baton and I carried it, but I seen what it was. Some of y'all fans, y'all be delusional. That's why I'm glad Joe finally bossing up because I feel like he was trying to be nice with the fans, but the fans were all fucking with the niggas that's trying to stick him up. And what I mean, stick them up. These things not even showing up to work. They're not showing up to work, people. What y'all want them to do? It's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Joe, I'm going to give you advice publicly. Again, we ain't talk privately about none of this. I'm going to give it publicly. Bro, don't ever put yourself in a position where you're not as transparent that people could feel and sympathize with niggas who ain't. Yo, play this. Joe, if you... Didn't put out a podcast for six weeks like them bum ass things didn't show up. They would violate you, your own fans. You lazy. Oh, this. Oh, it's because we substitute your Patreon. Like, yo, you, you a bum. Like, we don't fuck with you no more. Like, damn. Like, this ain't worth it, blah, blah. Nobody tweets at the bozos, the stooges saying it's not worth it. They tweet at you. Don't ever make your audience not really understand the real. You're building a business from the love from your audience. Keep it a hundred with them every step of the way. That's what I do. Every step. Because they fell in love with a bunch of niggas who were really using the, the love of your fans to stick you up. If, if it was, as I told you, when a mall, mealy mall, this is you, buddy. Your homie hit me up like, yo, I, I'm going to be honest with you. These niggas finna go on strike again. 
Imagine if Joe ain't fired these things. And you don't hear it. I'm going to play the clip. Joe would be in limbo again for weeks, months. Who knows how long? Who knows how long? He would be in limbo with these niggas trying to figure it out. The audience wouldn't be blaming them to be blaming Joe. What could you do in that situation? Y'all tell me. Y'all tell me. I, I, I want a real answer. Y'all tell me. You see, I don't deal with that because... I come in here and I grind this, I grind the stream, I grind whatever you might consider what I do, I grind it solo. So you're not gonna fall in love with nobody else. It's it's only Ak. Ak here every day. He gonna talk to y'all every day. It's I'm out every day. Joe, I think you fucked up there. For all the people who be supporting these dick sucking, dick riding ass niggas. I want to ask you why. And you don't got to answer why to me, but answer why to yourselves in your little group chats and reddits or whatever the case is. Because when these bozos were planning to go on another strike, Joe fired them only because they didn't show up again. He didn't fire them because he planned to fire them. They hit that nigga up and said, we ain't showing up again as one of Maul's homie hit me up and said, yo, they ain't showing up. What do you expect them to do? Try to make magic happen for another six weeks, another 12 weeks, another three months? They came back and decided to leave again. They didn't even have the decency to tell the audience, hey, we're back, but shit's still fucked up. We don't know if we'll be back next week. They smiled and giggled and acted like shit was cool. Joe, you need to put your fucking foot down. You don't got to listen to me. You're your own boss. But I'll be damned if anybody ever in my camp have the loyalty of the people who I put my blood, sweat, and tears and I sacrifice my life, my happiness. Joe has exposed shit about his life that has made his life a fucking hell. I've done the same thing too. Just to gain an audience to be closer to y'all. And then a bum-ass nigga like Mealy Maul and Ruri come in and y'all are sucking them off while they ain't contribute shit. Ruri had a whole situation with his fiance. He wouldn't tell y'all nothing. Joe comes in, tell y'all every single thing going about his life. He bears it all. Y'all crucify him. Y'all uplift him. Fuck it. Y'all do what y'all do. The niggas y'all are sucking off don't tell you shit. That's the niggas y'all fuck with. Joe, don't ever do that again. When I come here, I say I say embarrassing shit about me. I'm I open up myself to critique, laughter, ridicule. It's cool. You know why? Because I love my audience. I want to connect with them. I tell stories that people would never say. I tell embarrassing moments that people would never say. I bring them into my life that people would never do. Joe, you do that as well. And after you've done that, you allow two bum ass niggas to basically. Rock your audience to sleep and make it seem like you're the bad guy. By the way, it's not a problem that they don't do that because exactly why? It's the Joe Budden podcast. But they start to take that idea like, wait, we could stick him up for shit because people care about us. Joe, the problem you did, where you went wrong, you should have kicked them niggas to the curb a long time ago. I'm just telling y'all the truth. I'm going to get to the part where he fires these niggas on, on, on this shit. That should have been addressed. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> Sorry. I know it's small. I know. But it's not. It's the small things. I psychoanalyze my friendships. For sure. Small things. I psychoanalyze. Small things are big things. I look at patterns. I look at people. That was important amongst other things that will go unsaid. It don't matter. If you know, you know. <laughs> Rory popped up around episode nine. Chat, remember when I told y'all that Rory, that Joe was talking to Rory last episode like a, like a side chick from Dykeman. And he was talking to Rory about things you would talk to your side chick about or a girl you just fucked. If you've ever dealt with a girl 
who felt feels like they have given you something that they hold sacred, but to you, you're used to either experiencing or you're used that is the part for the course for other people you deal with. That person is gonna express something that's toxic. It's called entitlement. And Rory felt he was entitled to shit that he was not. Listen. 10, 11, 12, one of those, 16. It was somewhere around there. Nobody asked him to. Nowhere was he in my thought process. <laughs> I met Rory in 2014. This pod started 2015. I don't even know you well enough for you to be in my thought process. <laughs> You came along when All Love Lost was being created. Mm -hmm. That's the end. <laughs> That's the end of the road. Mm -hmm. He don't really know me. No. He don't. It's unfortunate. Yo, Rory, how much of a bozo are you? Joe proposed to Sin Santana because he loved her and they eventually had a child. Trust me, I knew how much he loved her because I was I was I was around a couple times. Sin came around, it was a thing. Like he is, like I remember the everyday struggle production team have to accommodate Sin. Joe made it that that had to happen. You know why? Because that was the love of his life. And through him, not only having a child with Sin, but eventually engaging to marry Sin. Your dick riding ass decided that the girl that you were dealing with at the time, well, if Joe's getting married, let me get married. So you begged and you begged and you got on like both knees and he said, Jay Z, please, please, could I propose to my girlfriend at your Rock Nation brunch? <clears throat> and Jay Z, realizing how much of a fucking loser you were, he's like, uh, sure, but just do it outside of the, like, venue. Like, do it on the lawn outside, not, like, inside. But sure, nigga. You got, you got engaged. By the way, not because you really wanted to. Because you was dick riding Joe. Joe got engaged. You felt. You had to get engaged. If that's not dick riding to his highest level, you tell me. You tell me. Keep it going. As transparent as I think I am. Rory pops up around episode 17. By the way, if you don't know what he's describing, he's saying, Rory, I don't even know you like that. <laughs> By the way, imagine thinking you gang and a nigga telling you four years or six years later, nigga, I don't even really know you like that, bro. In 18 and 19, he's still working a fucking job. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Made it both work. No conversation has ever transpired between Rory and myself where an exchange of ownership would be brought up. Hmm. Talk about Even it. now with all this shit going on, neither one of them have still said, hey, I want to re renegotiate my contract. Neither one of them have said, I want to raise. Oh. Neither one of them have said what they believe the problem to be. What? No. Besides accounting. Besides accounting. Hmm. They want, to, they want to see it. By the way, if you're listening to this, you're probably saying, Yo, Ak, you were right. Joe probably paying them like $50 a week. Joe was paying them above industry standard. No. <laughs> You've gotten accounting. See, the problem is they don't know the difference between the word accounting and the word audit. Wow, talk to him. Because these brothers are my friends, the Spotify deal came along and it was time to negotiate. Talk to him. Taking a sip of something. Go ahead. Go ahead, my brother. I know you're parched. Am I good so far? Yeah. I'm not out of bounds, right? Okay. You're good, brother. That's important. The Spotify deal came and Rory called. And Rory said, hey, I want to own some of this. Okay, let's do a timeline. <clears throat> 
everyday struggle, Joe Budden worked from, me and Joe worked from March or April, March, March of 2017 all the way to December of 2017. His Spotify deal, I believe, came in 2018. That Stooge Rory was on the podcast. Was it 2016, maybe? Way before that. So I seen somebody send me a clip, send me a little screenshot. Yo, Rory said this on Reddit that he owes this, he owes that. You bitch ass nigga. How about you answer to all of this now? Stop typing. Start talking. Joe took the muzzle off. He violated you, nigga. Everybody with a brain knows you are not involved in a Spotify deal. Spotify dealt with Joe Budden. You lied about that. You lied like you were involved. You capped and you supported and blindly dick rode when Joe was talking his shit because Joe made a decision that was mainly good for him. Possibly for y'all, but y'all don't want to follow his vision. If you agreed with Joe turning down that deal, that means you were in it for the long haul with Joe. You can't be sitting here questioning him. If I had went to revolt with Joe, I couldn't question three months later, yo, why revolt doing this? I'm rocking to say, hey, Joe, I came here because I'm blindly following you. I hope you have my best interests at heart and hopefully over time will make sure I'm either properly compensated or somehow repaid for my services. You bum ass niggas did not do that. And this is why, even though y'all probably hurt by what Joe said, y'all can't get on a public platform and talk about it. You know why? Because you look like idiots. One thing about Joe. Joe is kind of like me in a way of we'll both just tell the truth that makes us look bad just to put it out there. Fuck it. I know we'll kind of look bad, but I'll just tell the truth. Y'all wanted to frame shit like a PR company, and that's why you're looking dumb today. Let's keep going. And I said, no. <laughs> and he said, yeah, but do say Palooza. <laughs> Ain't one of the niggas from Do Say Palooza was uh, 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 was like a pervert or like he was raping chicks. Or what's going on? I don't know. I don't. I, I think Ruri, when it comes to shit that he needs to talk about, you don't talk about it. Ruri, did you ever talk about that one? No, right. Ruri, you see how? And by the way, I don't know all the information about those allegations. But you see how an allegation, by the way, I'm pretty sure Duce or Hennessy or whoever was sponsoring y'all don't want to stand next to y'all when y'all are claiming a guy accused of certain things. Do you see why academics would then be in turn upset that you were calling him a cokehead when he's also talking to the same people that you would love to be in business with? Do you understand why I was probably on your head? Do you understand why I was on Adam's head? Y'all not going to say certain shit about me. I don't do cocaine, nigga. I don't do no type of drugs. If you say I drink a lot, you are within your bounds. It's obvious. It's clear. I do it on camera. When you start saying I do some other illicit type of things, now you're telling me that you, you are trying to create a narrative which is not true. I will violate you and go to the utmost extent, the utmost extent to let people know that you're a fucking liar, a fraud, a bitch, and someone who tried to sabotage me. That's what you did. And that's why you're in the position you are now. Sulk all you want. Hug your little puppy. But y'all about to sit here and get all the smoke. We gonna bury you like you deserve to be. And I said, no. I'm not selling anything. <laughs> Am I off base? No. Should I not say that? <laughs> no. And then he said, well, I want to get paid from YouTube. And I said no. Years ago. And he didn't understand why. And I then, let me speed this up a little bit. And then I said, well, Rory, it's my YouTube page. 
It's my YouTube page. These are my people. However many people it is, it's here. I'm I'm paying for. I'm glad we're here at this point. You see, for all you dick riders of Ruri and Mealy Mall, I want you to pay very specific attention to this. And while y'all give Joe all this blame, I want you to answer this. Let's listen closely. It. I've been paying for it. I didn't have it to pay for it. I own it. It's mine. Mm. And YouTube pounds. Why would I have to do that? It, no, I'm still trying to figure this out. Get away from me. No, but you my man. Mm. So hold up. Whatever footage I tape, you can have it. Wait, what? For all you niggas who are dick riding the stooges, huh? Let me give you a story. My YouTube been popping. It's always been popping. Niggas fuck with. Yo, it's chat, yo, chat niggas be running shit. Y'all know. There was a time when Complex, when I went there, they were figuring out YouTube, but they were having a hard time. Joe was like running shit, certain shit by me, but Joe was like, yo, act, you're the YouTube guy. Tell me what the solution is. And you know me, I'm kicking down doors. We gonna be in this shit. We gonna figure this shit out. Joe, it was no room for failure. One time Complex did come to me and they said, yo, act, do you want to put everyday struggle on your channel because it's not doing as good on ours? And your channel, anything goes on your YouTube channel, boom. Now, I thought about that. I'm like, hmm. Hmm. Compelling. I said no. I'm going to tell you why I said no. Because unlike what Joe is saying here, Complex wasn't telling me to put it on my channel and we would have joint ownership or that I owned it. They were saying, we just want to use your platform now to put out the content that we hire you to do. Yet, we're going to take all the profits. We're going to take and claim all of it. Let me compare it to what Joe just said. And by the way, to you bum ass Old ass niggas that be sucking Jay Z's cock. Listen to me clearly. I love because y'all the claw for cloth. Shut the fuck up. Let me explain. What Joe just said about Ruri. He's saying. I could. You're not gonna get any of the profits if it's uploaded on my channel. I built this. Like it's called the Joe Button YouTube. People might come here for my music. People might come here for my old shit. Who knows? They might come here for me. They might bump into this. I don't think I should be able to split this with you. However, I'm a good guy. I will allow you not only to upload it on whatever you want to do it, but if you upload it through your means and it gets views, you can have the profits. Nigga, Complex would have never done that. If Complex told me that, I would have done the heartbeat. You know what? I would have erased the fact that y'all knew that that, that 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 everyday struggle was available on their YouTube. It would have just been on mine. But after I said no to that, because I realized they were going to take all the profits, it was no more of a question. And by the way, they figured it, we, we, we all figured it out because we built their shit from a million to two million real quickly. That was the whole point. Their whole shit wasn't to give me the content to build my YouTube. It was to use the content to build theirs. They wouldn't share it with me like how Joe is saying that he's down to. So you pay for the cameraman. You pay for the production. You pay for this. You pay for that. But the end product, which is the content, you're saying you're down to share it with the people who. Y y you ever realize I never uploaded Everyday Struggle episodes? On my, on my channel, the most I ever did was, and I had to get explicit permission to use portions of it. If y'all watch when I described the Migos thing, I had permission. I used portions of it. I did not own the footage. Joe is literally telling his audience who are sucking the dick of the two stooges, hey, they wanted a piece of what I was doing, what I built up my myself. And I told him, hey, I'll give you, the, you can use the footage as well. You just got to build up a YouTube yourself. 
since when everything Joe is talking and preaching turned to the, the point and the fact where you don't have to build anything yourself. The Stooges, I told them, go build another podcast if you really want leverage. You build a podcast without Joe and that shit lit, Joe going to have to talk to you different. They didn't want to do that. Put the same episodes on your, on your YouTube. If they're coming to your YouTube more than Joe, Joe got to talk to you about some shit. They didn't do that. Why are y'all mad at Joe? They're lazy. They're bums. No other place would do that. But you my man, so you can, right? They wouldn't. But you my man, so you can have it. Go build your YouTube page. Hmm. Same for Maul. You both can have access. You know what happened? They didn't build the YouTube nothing. page. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. So that existed. And then they wanted to know, well, how much are we going to get paid from this Spotify thing? Hmm. Like, how much is it? And I said, I don't know. Like, my plan is to build a business. And mm. I've never built a business. Mm. So, well, not a proper one. Not correctly. Mm. But I'm taking the proper steps now to do that. Mm. So I can't really tell you how much you're going to be paid because it, it's going to fluctuate. I have no idea what these costs are going to be. Mm. They made me lock into a number. Okay. Uh, uh, they needed some ballpark idea. Let me, again, give you some realistic what's going on. If all these niggas were equity owners, partners, as they claimed they were, they wouldn't want Joe to just tell them what their new salary would be. They would just be like, hey, Joe, whatever this deal is, you know we finna get 20, or I'm about to get 20, he about to get 20, you could keep the other 60. If it was really being broken down, like they were all owners and bosses, they wouldn't even care what the number was. So if it's a dollar, I get 20 cents, he get 20 cents. Or maybe it was like, yo, hey, I get 25, he get 25, Joe, you get 50. By the way, Joe has to get more. If you're, you're, you're an idiot if you think Joe is even near equal to these niggas. These niggas do nothing outside of what they have to do. Joe is putting it all to work. So let's just say 25, 25, 50. And that is so generous because I heard it was on that. Look at it. They held Joe down to a point that he had to tell them a monetary value that they would get paid. Remember them talking like they were bosses and equity owners? I don't think you are. I don't think you are. They needed to just see something. I'm not agreeing unless I have some idea of what it looks like. So what did we do? We went and came up with what it might look like, even though we didn't know. We projected what the year would look like. We projected. We projected. We can't project. And it's, <laughs> but it's not guesstimating. It, it was doing a good job to look at things that we felt like would come up across the year mm. that we would need to have in order to run the podcast. That's simple. Okay. Yeah, but a lot more shit happened after that, after that got done. That's secondary to what we did. We planned... To give them a number like they asked for. And, and they how, agreed. And how did that look? Was it a flat fee or? Chat, somehow somebody sent me a tweet. Stop saying that Ruri and Mealy Maul deserve shit because it was there for the lion's share of time. I keep telling you, there's been nobody that appeared on Everyday Struggle more than me. I out, I out appear, if that's the thing, I appear more than Everybody that's ever been at Complex on Everyday Struggle to the tune at least of 15 episodes or more. More than Joe, more than Wayno, more than Nadeska, more than any guest. I out-appear everybody. Yet I don't believe that I deserve to own it. You know why? I came in after it was created. Now, 
maybe in the future I could have negotiated that, hey, listen, now everyday struggle is synonymous with me. I want to own a piece of this. Maybe I'm not saying that is impossible. That's why you do business. But for me to come in something that Joe and Complex already had had in place, I worked basically almost a year with Joe. Then they gave me the keys, and then me, Wayno Star, we figured it out from 2018 to like 2019. And then pretty much it was 2020. I feel like we we were really doing some shit, but it ended then. If you want me to say that I felt like I owned the shit, you're going to think I'm Ruri and Mealy Maul because I'm not delusional. Why do y'all think that those bums own any part of the Joe Budden podcast? Why do y'all think that? I want to know. Why do y'all think they own any part of it? Oh, the hell built it. Nigga, who built everyday struggle more than me? When niggas left, I was there. When niggas didn't want to do it, I was there. When they fired producers, I was there. When they changed over, like, associate producers, I was there. I was there with everybody. When the desk was sick, I was there. I was there with everybody. But did I own it and create it? No. What are y'all learning from whatever business y'all are thinking about? Y'all can keep thinking that. I'm telling y'all the facts. Let's keep it going. Was it not a flat fee? It was a number based on the expenses we projected to have, which went well above and beyond what we projected. But nonetheless, we wanted to give them some assurance so that they could plan life, Mm. whatever that means. Talk about rentals or purchases, Uh living accommodations, expenses to get to and from work, whatever that means. That's Mm. their business. But we needed to give them some framework of what this would look like so that they could say, okay, we get it. Mm -hmm. That's and they went through whatever their deal points were with their respective attorneys at the time. And we negotiated and we came up with something between these gentlemen and myself. And I had a situation with Spotify. <sighs> How do I say this? Say it, buddy. I want to be respectful. No, say it. No, say yeah. it, Joe. Yes. Joe, this your problem, Joe. You had these bitch ass niggas having you muzzled like you some type of bitch and you're talking to them because you're coddling their feelings. They've taken the gloves off with you. They got lawyers emailing you, nigga. They're not they're not dealing with you like a friend. What you wanna call your you wanna come on the podcast? Oh yeah, no, you know, the Ruries, that's my guy. I don't Bro, they're dealing with you as if you are in breach of contract. Like you stole from them. Why the fuck? This is why exactly you don't want to go in, in, in business with your friends. A lot of y'all keep talking about what Joe said. Joe said, cool. Joe is late to handling this the right way. He's late. He's late. He's so late. Let me put, let me put it like this in radio terms since I get I guess podcast is almost a new radio. Niggas like Ruri and Mealy Maul after their actions the first time around would never be allowed on air again. You will never be allowed on air. They were allowed to go on air and try to spin even more the narrative in their favor after they took off six fucking weeks. If you do that and you are assigned to a huge company that's on Radio Airways, you will never get back on that platform to explain your side again. Go on your Instagram live, go anywhere, but you will not go back on that platform. Joe brought it back on. Bro, I'm a grown-ass man. I had to handle business myself. Why y'all dealing with a nigga who's 40? He's Jay-Z pre-cum. Don't he got every fucking... Like a uh, uh, um, asset available to him to like deal with his shit, and then the other nigga, he's grown as fuck. Why y'all acting like their kids? Like Joe's taking advantage of them. The nigga been on the podcast for six years. He was at least twenty two, twenty three. 
You know, we're just numbers to the companies. Hmm. They don't, I, you know, last pod, that podcast, I was trying to say to Jay-Z, so what thing, but it's, it's really so what? Like, nobody Let me cares. skip through some shit. Not see the light of day unless it's a Joe Budden project. Hmm. Acting under the guise of friendship. And see, that's the respect part. When you eliminate the contract and all of these things that re the respect emulates through, when you eliminate that, I mean, if you don't know what's in there and you don't know what we're supposed to be doing versus what's happening, hmm. you can't talk to me about fucking respect. What should have happened at Spotify was if Spotify did the right thing, we would have got a big deal at the end. Guess what? It didn't happen. So what? So what? Who's, who's affected by it? what? What's, what's happening? I sleep great at night. That was never going to happen. It was a bad deal. Hey, to Joe Budden's audience, if you're in here, let me talk to y'all niggas. Because y'all are dumb. My chat niggas smart. Y'all dumb as shit. I keep seeing a narrative, oh, Joe robbed these two niggas of an opportunity to be multimillionaires. Y'all are acting like Joe built this podcast to get two other niggas rich, or even himself. Joe been had money. Maybe not all the time you thought it was like, yo, $10 million, but he was never starving. He was never saying, hey, I've been used to this lifestyle, give me the opportunity to be a millionaire. His whole thing, which that's why I keep telling y'all, Joe turned down money at Complex. Joe turned down a bunch of shit because he was fighting his fight. It became a thing where the fucking dumbass audience of Joe is then siding with, wait, why Joe turned down a deal that could make these guys millionaires? When Joe got with these niggas, that wasn't his goal. Why should his goal be that now? But I know why you think it should be that now. Because them niggas told you, oh, me and Joe were friends. So now it looks weird. Why you turn down the fact that your 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 friends could be millionaires? Joe is, is living in... Put it like this. Put it like this. Allegedly, Joe was asking Spotify for $100 million. Allegedly, they may have offered him $30 million. If they offer $30 million, let's just be very clear. First of all, these bums don't deserve nothing at all. But still, let's say Joe gave him two and a half, two and a half. So they get two and a half million. By the way, that's more money they've ever seen in their life, both of them. Say, what I'm trying to tell you is that for everything that you're saying about Joe, it's not about the Stooges. Joe himself had to turn down the lion's share of money. He had to turn down $25 million for himself. Y'all are worried about the broke bums. Oh, they could have been millionaires. Yeah, $2 million serves their purpose. Joe had to look at some shit and say, I'm going to turn down $25 million. $25. They were never going to get $25. Joe was going to get 80% of the money. And he turned it down. So why y'all be like, oh, you could have made your friends millionaires? Put it like this. I'm telling you this right now. Nigga owed me $25 million. Just legally, I ain't going to say nothing after that. I'm going to just say. I'm going to just say. <laughs> but just understand yourself and what you're thinking about. See, and let's talk about deals. Let's get back to deals. Because I own this, I am going to always be... Because, because I own this and because I have a 21-year history... With the industry and with the people Chat, in it. Chat, and the whole thing was fucked up because Joe speaks like that. Joe owns it. If you don't feel Joe owns it, you're an idiot. He owns it. He owns it. He owns the IP. He's the guy that without him, it can't be a podcast. Because he owns that. If he is, and by the way, from what I'm hearing, it looked like he was so, like, he's such a good guy. He told them, hey, if we make a dollar, we could split it as per, per this percentage. Don't mean our own shit. He's saying that we will split the profits if we get a profit, but y'all don't own it. Why are y'all trying to tell him what he could do with his own product if y'all don't own it? With an audience... The Joe Budden podcast, if you want to talk business about it, the call is coming to me. <laughs> I shouldn't have to say this. 
right? That call comes to me. And guess what? If it didn't come to me and it came to you, the first thing they would say to you is, do you own it? I do not. Get out. <laughs> Go get the guy that owns it mm-hmm. and bring him in here. Mm-hmm. That's what they would say. Am I off? Not at all. Not at all. So my issue with Rory, and I say Rory, in particular Rory, why is it him? <laughs> why is it him? Oh, yo. <laughs> why, why is what who? Why is it Rory what? Why is what Rory? Why don't I put more of this on Rory? I've wondered that. If Rory was here, I was coming to ask him if he is a liar, if he is a manipulator, if he willfully and purposefully misleads, if he believes his words to to match his actions, and are you misunderstood or do you misunderstand? I think people have accused you of the first several of those questions. Give it to me. Uh, I think people think that you come up in here and preach ownership and... Maybe aren't giving the guys ownership. No. That's that's a thing that I've seen. Well, with me, Parks, and I just closed a few deals like this, I believe you're worth the weight that you pull. Mm-hmm. And even my new podcast, the clauses I put in, and I don't play lawyer games, hey, if anybody leaves, it's over. <laughs> it's done. That's it. Hmm. That's how I give it up. If anybody leaves, you're done. See, because I know the job is never done. It's long. It's a long road. It's a long road. And I know shit get heavy and shit get weird and money changes people and things change people. At any point, somebody could get up and leave. Mm. And that's important. You want that. Ian and I don't have a contract. I say that all the time, right? Happy about at, it, buddy. and it's a it's a blessing. At I don't any, have a contract with any old motherfucker. Yeah, it's, it's and the, I love it's it. the best. If thing I don't ever. want, if <laughs> I don't want to talk to you again, I'm not. That's right. it. Likewise, if, if I want to fire <laughs> Ian in the morning, I'm getting rid of him. If he want to leave, he me. can. <laughs> we never had a contract. Yeah. We, me and Corey never had a contract. There's strength in that, but only if you know it. Right. Only if you know it. So anyway, we get back to the audit. If you if you want to audit me, you got to go. You got to go. Like, you can't put toothpaste back in the tube. Rory is sitting around wanting to know what the Spotify deal was. (laughs) It's over. Uh, (laughs) That ship has sailed. It is over. With basic... Rory, you fucking bum. I told you, dumbass. You should have stopped lying to the public, nigga. Academics don't lie about a motherfucking thing. And Joey tell me shit. I knew it. I looked in your eyes when Joe was talking about Spotify. Man, you... I looked in your eyes. You had no fucking idea what was going on. You had no fucking idea what Joe was saying. You were hearing shit for the first time, you fucking bum. But yet you fixed your mouth to talk about me. Oh, act is dumb. You know, you're like, he just be up there. Just be like drunk. Are you an idiot? This is your boss talking. This is your master talking. He's not talking that highly of you. He says you asked him a question and he said you got to go. Remember the last time I streamed and I said, yo, what Complex did was where they fucked up. They showed the workers what was going on with all the money coming in. Because truth be told, if McDonald's showed the average worker this is how much money we made off of you, and this is what we paid you. You would have a you feel a way. Employing somebody is kind of almost keeping them from the information and know how much you're making. You know why? They're comfortable with what they're making until they know what you made. That's all across business. So you hear Ruri trying to figure out. Yo, what was the Spotify deal was? How are you going to try to figure that out after the deal is done when you was dick riding Joe while he was talking about the deal and turning down the next deal? How? 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 Rory, you see, you and Mealy Mall, 
my life mission has been for niggas to never ever take niggas like your voice as any type of having any type of credence or credit, having any type of validity. Because it was niggas like you that wanted to lead people to think that people like me was idiots. Except we're here and you get exposed by your boss. You can refer to your contract and look at what you're paid and add shit up and see what's going on. And you would have the number. Mm. You would have anything that you want to have. Mm. But you're lazy. It reeks of laziness. There's no effort in this plan. Parks, you don't even have to interject. It's laziness. Parks, you're an engineer. I don't even think they kind of lit. They, they list you. You're probably engineer talent. Parks, I want you to answer this if you ever see this. Did I not say if y'all really wanted to negotiate or have leverage with Joe? Go build something apart from Joe. You can never, ever know your worth if you're sitting next to Joe every single time. Joe's been a celebrity for like damn near approaching 20 years. He's built up an audience that spanned 15 years. He's had a rap career that gives him validity with certain ears. He's done so much. That when he sits next to you, shit's going to be different. I'll give you the story. I love my sister. That's got I love her so much. Okay, let me tell you this. The first year when Complex Con came around, I had to go to I was going to Complex Con. Joe, he felt they'd negotiate with him late. Also, like, it was happening to be the time that his girlfriend and future wife at the time was going to have a baby shower. He felt like, hey, this wasn't really in the contract. Yo, y'all got to treat us a little different. You know, Complex was trying to get shit through. He said, you know what? I don't have to do it. Per my contract, I'm not going. I went. Me and Nadeska went. Nadeska was an employee for Complex at the time. I'm like, you know what? To entice me to come, they were like, yo, act. Yo, this is the first time you've seen the people. Like, you know, of course, we know you've been lit before we got you here, but damn, you know, we helped you a little bit. Like, damn, we could make it special with you interacting with an audience. Like, Yo, this is the first time people could be like, yo, I've watched academics for four years. Here he is. And I'm like, that's, I fuck with that. That's true. I'm like, okay, cool. You guys got to do it. Salute to my guy, Cornell. He said, yo, act. You don't even, like, and I want to get too much in their business. You don't even want to know what we're charging for a booth at ComplexCon. So all these little cool outlets, they're charging my arm and a leg. It's the coolest place to be. If you want to showcase an item, sell an item, promo some shit, act. We're going to give you a pretty decent sized booth for free. If you want to sell merch, whatever, whatever. So even after we've paid you thousands to go, if you want to make more money and you want to go sell some shit or put your brand on display, go ahead. Remember why I came to Complex? I wanted to make the brand of academics bigger. I said, jumped on it. Let's do it. I'm like, let's do merch. If you go upstairs right now, there's so much chat nigga merch. I order so much shit. I'm like, I order mad chat nigga merch, blah, blah, blah. But I also enlisted the help of a friend of mine. His name is Black Picasso. I say, yo, you know what some people know us for? It's that Migo shit. I say, yo, remember this is November. I'm like, yo. He had, he had posted like a drawing of us in the moment. I said, yo, put that on a shirt and let I'll go and I'll sell that there. Now, I had a discussion with Joe and Adeska before. I said, yo, hey, listen, everything else I'm selling is academics brand, which, which is chat nigga shit, which is my face, which is other things. But I'm going to be honest with you. 
you know, Complex was really late in the merch shit. So it was really, all I really had to do is get the permission of Nadeska and Joe. I said, there's a moment in, and I think I'm, I might still have it on my Instagram. There's a moment in that Migos interview where we all have different reactions and it's three people side by side. It's dope. I think people will buy that. I love how the the, 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 the creator guy did it. And you, I was trying to get their approval. And Joe says to me off top. And by the way, Joe, you know, I'm just not a liar. So I just, I know sometimes y'all don't do, y'all don't tell exact shit. But I, I, I give it all up, bro. I'm sorry. Joe says to me off top. And I believe these are the numbers. Joe says, Ack, you sell a fucking shirt with my face on it? Now, keep in mind, at, at, at that point, I'm thinking, oh, well, everything's cool. 30, no, 33%. I'll give everybody like a third cut. Joe says, Ack, you sell a shirt with my face on it? I want 45%. And I'm like, whoa. And I remember, I'm like, what the fuck? Now my ego kicks in. I know not only is he thinking about the moment and how he was instrumental in it. Shit, that was a fucking viral meme too. But then I'm thinking, wait, Joe, if you considering it because you're Joe Budden, nigga, I'm academics. So I meet him at the same level. I'm like, if you, if you want that, I want that. We either going to have to both come down or what? And let me salute to my sister, Nadeska. Nadeska allowed me and Joe to get the same percentage, and she took whatever was in the middle. I love Nadeska so much. But th that was one of the times I knew how Joe thought about everything we were doing. It was not 33, 33, 33%. He could have that thought. I could have my own thought. We were either going to figure it out or not figure it out. For that particular time where we were selling merch, or I was trying to sell merch, Nadeska split the difference and said, I really don't care. No, it's cool. Like, I'll, I'll take whatever the little is in the middle. I love her so much. I say that to say, if you believe the Joe Budden podcast is going to be 33, 33, 33, with the two stooges, when he came on Everyday Struggle with me, and I brought, I would argue, the majority of the audience, at first at least, they grew in love with Joe, I'll be honest, and Joe saw himself as, hey, I'm a guy with a name, if Billboard's writing about us, they're using Joe as the headline, they're when they're talking about every they struggle, they're constantly chronicling my history in the game. I don't feel we're on equal standing. This is business, people. I can't fault that man at all. At that time, I was sticking to my guns. I said, nah, y'all see how much people I'm bringing here? What's up? The desk has split the difference. Now, that was everyday struggle. Imagine Joe with the two niggas who are only known because of him. You think Joe looks at them and says, nah, you deserve a quarter. Y'all are only known because of Joe. Y'all are only known because of Joe. These are uncomfortable conversations that fans of that podcast don't want to talk about because they just feel like Joe should be a great friend. Hey, he's your friend. Why don't you just split everything? It's not the truth. I could imagine why it was called a Joe Budden podcast. You know why? Nobody knows Ruri and Neely Mall in the grand scheme of things. Okay. It's laziness or um, it's they are the, they are either being ill advised, well, or, it, or or advising ill. Like, it's one or the other. Like, Enough painting it like, black no, when like, it's blue. Like, like of a experience too, I think. As as a is a. a um, in in this space, as a as a ten ninety nine, basically, or whatever you want to call it, there you know I don't know if they're ten ninety nine. No, see that's why. Shit. Let me interrupt you. That's yeah. why I let the whole thing play out. We can't say that no more. I have intel from that side that says they fully understand what their contract says and means, and they just have an issue with it. 
stuff. I sent over accounting that was beautiful. Uh-huh. It was packaged. Hey, Marnie, I love you. It was packaged the way it needed to be. And it painted a real clear picture of what you should be paid <laughs> versus what you've been paid. They didn't ask a fucking question. Not one. Hmm. Six, seven weeks. Let, let me Let me explain what he's saying. It seems to me that maybe Joe told him, hey, I'll give both of y'all 10% of the net profits. Then they start watching Joe's pockets. They're like, wait, Joe just got his teeth done. He just got, I don't know, Botox. He just got like mad Fendi hats. Wait, we are profitable. We are making a lot of money. Where is our 10%? Now, I, you're going to hear Joe point it out later. Joe could become a millionaire from like 10 different things. Revolt. I'm pretty sure he could get a pull-up deal worth millions. And this is where some people keep getting hurt. I'm sorry to burst the bubble that you live in. If me and Joe Budden go anywhere, the starting conversation of price to pay for us talent wise is at least three to four million per year. Just let you know. That's the starting. So think about how Joe's thinking. Y'all are watching my pockets, but. Joe is, I don't think Joe is that profitable of that podcast. But they might look at Joe's lifestyle. I I, want to use an example, but I kind of don't. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. I'm just a real ass nigga, bro. Like, if you don't know, I actually, I signed Chosen to, I, I signed Chosen for like, which, by the way, I don't even know if that contract really matters anymore because, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm just not like a, a, a thirsty nigga in terms of that. But still, I signed Chosen. One day, so Chosen was coming to my crib. He was, I have a, this is a studio. This isn't like whatever niggas be thinking. There's a DJ booth there. Back there, there's a plexiglass actual recording booth. There's four monitors here. There's a racked situation here with all type of situation. There's a keyboard over there. There's another keyboard right here. There's a controller right here. You have lights over there. You might think this is small. This is a huge room. I'm telling you this as a fact. I signed Chosen. I gave him, I forgot, was it like his first advance was like maybe 10, 15,000. I gave him that. By the way, Here's the thing. Chosen's never been profitable for me. I used to put him in a studio. It cost me 20000 And by the way, Chosen, if you see this, please don't get mad. Like, I'm, I'm, bro, I, I just like telling the truth about shit. I, I'm not no liar. I just like putting shit out there. There ain't nothing secret with me. I need to be coming with secret shit. I ain't got time for that. I was paying like $20,000 for Chosen to be recording every week, 12 hours, like multiple times. And I was trying to get him to do a project. $20,000, I was paying it out. I'm probably seventy to 70000 I would believe, in the hole from Chosen. Seventy, eighty thousand. 80000 Chosen has not made me that. You know what happens when you sign somebody? You got to eat that. I'm eating that. I got to eat it. Okay. Let me give it. This is the facts. I only want business owners to listen to me. Cool. I think Chosen is so amazing talent-wise. But it's not profitable. Hasn't been profitable yet. (laughs) Told you how much I spent so far. One day Chosen says to me, yo, Ack, you know niggas told me, because here's the thing, Chosen's talking to other people. Other people's like, what? Wait, no way, wait. Academic science? Wait. Wait, academics who just bought a mansion? Wait, academics who... He just signed... Wait, what? You know what they told him? They said... 
wait, so how much Ack signed you for, or whatever the case is? Wait, how much money does he give you? By the way, let me also, I'm, I'm so transparent. Like, by the way, Joe, I challenge you to get to this level of transparency. You'll never. I not only signed him for that amount of money, Chosen got a monthly stipend of thousands for helping me with my music. By the way, Lil Ack has not put out a song since last year. But I was paying him monthly for helping out, whether he's in studio, whether he's helping try to come up with a concept. Thousands. Keep in mind. So I'm down. I'm down money. In the grand scheme of things, I'm down money. But I've never looked at music really to be like, oh, I'm going to make rich. I'm like, yo, you know what? This is cool. I kind of like it. Yo, this helped bring my brand, blah, blah. Chosen says to me one day, he says, yo, yo, I ain't going to lie, yo, a lot of niggas be telling me that I should have you pay me more. I'm like, huh? They're like, yo, yeah, now nah, they're looking at you. They're like, you got a lot of money this and third. This was one of the most uncomfortable conversations, and this is where it applies to Joe. Chosen is chosen is Rory. Let me break it down. I had to explain to Chosen. I said, Chosen, let me explain how much I give to you. I give you money every month that you could rent a place. I gave you an advance. I give you money that you could eat. I pay everything for you. I, if you're coming somewhere, I transport you. Everything's paid for. Now let's look at what you've made for me. Shit, even my biggest song thus far, the one with six nine. The chosen right on, chosen right on. Nope. I'm I'm in a loss with you. Let me further explain. Chosen then says to me, well, they're watching. They said, yo, you just got a house. Like the people are talking to me. They're saying, you just got a house. You just got this. You just got that. And I had to break down the very harsh reality to Chosen. I said, if you think music is why I have everything I have, you're lost. That's not what it is. My riches never came from music. It came from primarily my media career. So you're around me and music isn't that profitable, but everybody's looking at me like, yo, Ak is the guy with a lot of money and you're helping him with music. Now I'm at a loss with music in terms of money, but he's watching me buy this, buy that with money that's coming from other shit and people are advising him yo no you should pay you more so i had to tell him i'm at a loss i t I, I ain't gonna lie to you i chosen i offer i said i'll show you everything nigga i uber you to the studio it's a hundred dollars nigga, nigga i paid twenty thousand here to this studio that you like to record at for this month then i paid twenty two thousand the next month then i paid this then let's look at what you made me nobody you see, that's where you separate the bosses and the workers. Because once you start talking about what you've made versus what you're getting paid, they stop asking. Oh, no, no, never mind, never mind. No, nah, no, nah, them niggas is tripping. Wait, wait you don't, you don't want to see how much you have lost me? Oh, but I guarantee if, if it was a conversation about how much you made me, you would love to partake, huh? That's what's going on here, Chad. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This isn't this isn't the shots to chosen. Chosen is a good guy. When it comes to that, it's, it's, it's not shots to. I'm explaining what y'all don't realize. You know what Mealy Maul and what's that nigga named Ruri is looking at? Yo, Joe, you got new teeth. Yo, you living better. You just moved to this place. They're watching his pockets. Here's the thing. And this is what I was trying to say. Joe Ben told them, though, publicly, I'm making more money from everything besides the podcast. I'm making millions from Love and Hip Hop. I'm making millions from motherfucking going to do this thing with the pull-up. I'm making 
money everywhere else. Unfortunately, when people feel like they have completely contributed to what you have done, they start thinking that, well, I'm the reason why you're doing that. The state of the culture, check that Joe Budden gets. Do you think that he needs to answer to Rory about why he got extra hundred thousands or millions? Do you think he needs to answer why Mona Scott hit him up for love and hip hop and she paid him millions of dollars potentially? Do you think he got an answer to Rory? Well, let me tell you, that's what they're asking. And I understand because niggas asked me that. I had to break down to my team. Hey, I hire all of y'all. There's only one nigga who will get paid rainy day up or down. And it's my nigga Leaf. You know why? He was with me with this media shit before it made a dollar. So now we can make a little earning. He'll always get paid. I had a situation when it came to music. I had another situation when it came to some other business. You know, I told everybody. You will get paid as long as this check exists. But you know what they, they eventually look at? But you still getting money. No, it has nothing to do with you. You're only getting paid if music is profitable. My media company will always be profitable. That doesn't mean I just blindly cut you a check. You're helping me not with media, with music. Now, you might be like, Yo, why are you telling us this? I'm telling you this because what these bums are talking about in terms of auditing they're thinking Joe is hiding money from them because of Joe's lifestyle. Except Joe been a celebrity before he knew these niggas. And he's getting money with or without them. And that's what nobody actually says to them niggas. The reason why Joe is being offered half a million or whatever, whatever, I would argue because people saw how, 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 how you know, culture changing his appearance was on Everyday Struggle was. More than even a podcast. But even then, he's doing work somewhere else. I'm probably going over a lot of y'all heads, but it's okay. Y'all will watch this later on, save it on YouTube, whatever, and you'll be like, oh, I get it. When I came and sat here and said this would take about a month, that's because it was accounting that would take a month. Mm -hmm. Rory came in here and said I sent him a text at LaGuardia Airport. Yeah, I did, but why, Rory? Because there was a really uncomfortable conversation had when I wasn't present between you, Maul, and people that work for my network. Is anybody offended in here when I say that? No. Work for, work with, dice it up how you want. We together is gang. <laughs> I'm paid well. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Hey, so are they. So are they. So when you audit, let me talk to the audience. When you audit, right, it's because you think something's off. Mm -hmm. It's because you think something is wrong. Mm -hmm. If they know what the contracts say and they know that they overpaid and they are doing math and doing all the shit you need to do, then what do you think is wrong? Because that's the problem when you shake the tree. They're watching Joe's lifestyle. Joe's on motherfucking clubhouse talking about he he's tricking on bitches. That's Joe's thing. He likes I think he likes tricking. It seems to me. I don't know. They watch Joe rocking designer clothes. They watch Joe going on vacation. And they forget about the fact that you're only helping with a podcast. They start thinking, wait, how much money does Joe really have? And why don't we have a part of that? You got to be cool with whatever you find. And what happened was. Joe, I'm going to tell you what happened. Just, Joe be talking in like circles. Joe showed him the books to say, we're not making as nearly as money as much money as you think we are. Despite y'all looking at my lifestyle, Joe's always going to be rich because Joe is a household name. They didn't want to accept that. Problems. I went and did that accounting. And my resentment grew and grew and grew. I got angrier and angrier. Because the story that it paints, if Joe's about money, I'd have got rid of these niggas ages ago. I'm a lot richer without him. Holy! Rory, if you ain't hear that, I won't even 
never played again. He said if he was about his Skrilla, his bread, his guap, he would have got rid of your bum ass a long time ago. You know why? Because you niggas don't bring in shit. Is that sociopathic to say? Let me explain that to you. You're a liability, not an asset. So when you was dick sucking and dick riding and talking about you or this and you or that, and I remember you talking and sending sneak disses at Gilly's podcast and other people, they'd be like, yo, some of you dudes better take the deal they offer you because some of y'all ain't really talented like that. Listen here, you dweeb. Joe Budden, your boss, your daddy just told you you were losing him money. He will be much richer without you. You fucking bum. I will make sure you go back on every single time you talk down on another fucking creator acting like you had it figured out, but you were hating. And you eat your words. I pay my nigga Leaf thousands a month. I don't feel I would be richer without him. Without him, I wouldn't do certain things. Without him, I wouldn't get certain places. Without him, I wouldn't be in. I wouldn't be here. How could I feel I would be richer without him? The thousands I pay him, if it's not currently earned equity, is back equity. I went to Philly with that nigga, and there was mad niggas who wanted my head. You know what I told him? I said, nigga, get out the car. I'm going to sit in here with all the tents, walk around this bitch. You got your joint on you and figure out if any niggas out here lay waiting us, nigga. He said, all right, nigga, sit in here. Don't open a window. Don't breathe. I'm going to be out here and I'm going to sit on. I'm going to check every nigga on the block. Checked everybody. Came back 20, 30 minutes later. Act, let's go. We good. Here's the door. I talked to them niggas already. I'm going to hold it open. Hop out of the car. Let's go. It's my nigga. The money he gets paid now, he's he doesn't have to earn it every month. He's been earned it. He's earned it in the past. He's shown, he's shown a commitment. He'll earn it in the future if he ain't done it yet. That's my nigga. He cool. I couldn't repay him for certain shit. So when I tell him, I gave him a raise this year. I said, yo, this is what we're doing. And hopefully I'm going to give you another raise. Let's go. But that's how it goes, chat. When Joe is saying that he'll be much richer without this nigga, Ruri, it's to tell you that he's a liability. Not an asset. He's a liability. Joe is glad he got him off the books. Listen. Say? Yeah, but, you know. It's a fact. <laughs> it's true. Sure. That exists. Where was I going before that? I had a great point. Uh, I don't know. Too. We're talking about contracts or something. Uh, Spotify, the development of... The In contract. those contracts, if I wanted to fuck either one of them, there's 90 million ways for me to fuck them. Hmm. Holy. Let's just say what it is, man. There are 100 million ways for me to fuck them in a contract, but unfortunately, they don't know that. And for me, I'm strapped against my morals or who I am as a man without them. It's like when I used to say to a girl, yo, if I'm not cheating on you, it's because I don't want to cheat. You're great, but I'm not cheating because I don't want to. That's it. Same thing. You're not getting fucked because who I am is I've been fucked every way throughout my whole career and my network exists for me to not fuck other people those ways, for me to make it avoidable. And if you need proof of that, call anybody that deals with my network. So for these gentlemen to not get that and not see it and how they're approaching it and how they're handling it, this ain't the way to gain respect. This don't gain you leverage. Well, no, because they're essentially calling you a liar. Let's just call it. Call it well, then Rory's little measly ass says, no, no, no. I don't know. It's not you, Joe. It's not you. I don't trust. What if it's wealth management? Joe, Excuse Joe, me? Joe, let me explain. Wealth management from a bum like Rory. He's counting your pockets. When you go look at a new car, he want to look at a new car. 
when you go get a new house, he wonder why he not looking at a new house. When you go to vacation in Bora Bora and Turks and Caicos, he wonder why he's still chilling out in Brooklyn and bed with his girl with the AC in the window that barely work. He's jealous of you, Joe. But you knew that. You got to watch it, niggas. Friends and business don't match. And friendship actually breeds entitlement. They're watching everything you do, every great thing you do for yourself. Wait, why did Joe just get his teeth done? Why did he just start rocking these type of hats and shirts? Why does he look like a stylist? Wait, he has a chef? Wait, wh why does this happen? Why is it not happening to me? Except here's the thing. Joe, let me give you the difference between bums like that and like a nigga like that I got on my team like a leaf. You know when I get shit in this and third, he don't be like, yo, where's mine? You know what he said? He come to me with business ideas for his shit. And I'm like, yo, I'm down to support it. Let's go. I want to support your shit because I want him to get rich like that too. These niggas thought what you dedicated your life for belonged to y'all instead of it was yours. They thought that podcast was for them. And everything I'm hearing is like you were kind of telling them like, bro, this is my shit. If y'all want to go create value elsewhere, go ahead. But this is mine. Then they got mad when you basically told them verbatim. You fucking, you know what I want. <laughs> Holy Rory. Do you hear yourself? You and your fucking entitled ass think that too many people's worlds revolve around you and you are insignificant in this equation. Holy I'm not trying to sound mean. I'm saying a fact. Not a nigga who thought it was a boss getting told by the actual boss that he's insignificant. Holy. Holy. Rory, I told you you was a, you was a translator. This is going to be the biggest test you ever did in your life. You thought you was important as Joe. I kept telling you, where Joe, like, even the audience that hates him, they still love him. You know why? They'll watch any nigga challenge him, but they'll never watch the nigga without Joe. Remember I told you that. They loved you because you used to be debated him. But they won't watch you without Joe. But you have a chance to prove it. Go make some shit. Beyond this little bubbling wave of everybody wanting to know what happened. Let it last for a year or two. When you're far removed from Joe. And then if you could prove that even one-tenth of those people are there waiting for your opinion, your reactions without Joe, go back to Joe and be like, they were here for me. But I'll take a mild bet. Won't be there. I'll take also a mild bet. You know the same thing. That's why you never did it. You were just hoping your friend was going to give you what you wanted. He's not an idiot. The fact is, the accountant team, mm. whoever the fuck he want to talk about, the people that keep the books, they keep them correctly, not because they're afraid of Rory, but because Rory. if they're wrong, the company goes down if the government or IRS, if anybody ever pops up in my office, I see you whispering. Listen. They have to protect themselves. There's liability when you're handling people's accounts. And when you're Are a you credited accounting firm, they stand by those Why things. Why do you they have do to more bit, Joe, to be honest with you, it's not about them being insignificant. It's about even us being insignificant. I know. They have a business. It's beyond you. It's beyond just what you bring into their company. And they have to be protective over that. So they're doing good business, period.
Yeah. That's it. They're not handling just you. Same. It's not just about Joe. Hey, <laughs> but same with me. Right. Correct. Right. The threat for me is the government coming and seeing something wrong and shutting my shit down. And hey, that's why I didn't apply for none of that PPP loan shit. Yeah. I didn't want the extra scrutiny. Mm. I'm I'm running businesses, mm. and the last thing I need is them down my. Like, and that's new for me as a businessman. And I'm proud of who I am as a businessman. Let me say that. Mm. Me too, buddy. See, now, now I'm proud these. Of who you become, for sure. Now, these two gentlemen may be looking at me through some different lenses. I don't understand how they. I, I have done business with you for over a decade, well over a decade, with a bunch of different situations. With Slaughterhouse as its own entity, with Slaughterhouse as a shady entity, with Joe Budden as an E1 entity, with Sla Joe Budden as an Empire entity. One of the biggest indictments is that. Another guy who has comfortably accepted the fact that he's a worker on the Joe Budden podcast, Parks, he knows his role. There's no shame in being a worker. He's also saying, them bums was tweaking. He's agreeing with me. Outside of the threat of the government, Rory, outside of the threat of the government, Talk Talk to Every that nigga. other day, Joe alone is entertaining seven and eight figure deals. I'm glad he mentioned that because that bum ass nigga Rory think that Joe is just some bum ass nigga who's leveraging the fact that Rory's sitting next to him to get a check. Yo, Joe, this is your fault. Joe, I'm going to point. This is your fault. You sat there and allowed the people who you put on to basically feel like they're the reason that you're getting opportunities. Are you crazy? Are you dumb? Joe, you know, just like I know, because I've talked to everybody you've talked to and are currently talking to now. You know that, but we won't talk about that. In terms of deals, contracts, whatever, for whatever the skill set is, even if I had a show a podcast or anything of the like, they're not saying, you know what they say? Act. What we're giving you is for you and whoever. You pick the, those people. We don't want to deal with them. We're just dealing with you. That's what they told me. Everybody. Everybody. I don't want to call names. Everybody. Whoever you bring on, your responsibility. We don't care who it is. They're not special. We didn't approach them. We approached you. Is this not hitting a nerve to y'all, chat? I'm telling you this. Spotify did not care if Joe Budden brought Rory and Millie Mall, Marissa Mendes and Peter Rosenberg. Didn't care if he brought me and Wayno. Didn't care if he brought any fucking person in the world. They went to Joe Budden for Joe Budden and friends. It's going to be fucked up when the people you're helping don't realize that. They think that, oh, no, I'm holding this weight that I can't be replaced. Any deal that Joe gets now, if he gets if, if he goes for a deal, you know, I know he's on Patreon. It will say Joe. It, it won't even say Joe plus anybody. It'll just say Joe. So if you want to bring people in, you you take it out of your money. All the contracts that I've negotiated recently, you know what they say? We're going to give you this money. If you want to get co-hosts and shit like that, you pay them. You pay them, nigga. We, give, we just give you the money. We just want you. You think a motherfucker's gonna come into my shit and tell my your act? Uh, 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 I feel like I'm an owner too. Are you fucking dumb or stupid? That's why I blame Joe. Your pimp hand wasn't strong enough, brother. You got no one's trying to rob either one of these guys. It's not enough for me to want to be shady. It's not enough to want to be malicious and evil and. But I'm certainly not going to keep convincing these gentlemen of that. Mm. This accounting thing has been a problem for three years. When I'm going back and doing the math, I got... Let me give you another uh, translation. 
Y'all dumbass niggas just gave Joe Button the leverage he needed to find out. He found out that he doesn't need y'all once he replaced y'all. That's why Mealy Mole is mad. You let him replace you for a couple episodes, and you know what got birth in his brain? That's why y'all are done. Y'all are not, y'all are replaceable. How you treat it. Mm. And truth of the matter, Roy's had a problem with a lot of shit for a lot of years. And I won't say what those things are, but there are emails of Rory questioning everything. Sorry, buddy. You don't get to question me. <laughs> nigga, imagine a nigga talking to me like that. Are you crazy? <laughs> Says, I have final say in all of this shit. <laughs> you want, but there's nothing you can do about anything. <laughs> but that, that contract also lets you participate a great deal in a lot of shit. So when you have a problem with that contract, like Joe always says, when you're shaking the tree, bitch, you better be sure. I'm not calling them bitch. Yeah. Slang. You better be sure you got a problem with what's in that contract. Hold on. I've had problems in contracts before. Know what I got to do to fix it? Wait for the next contract. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been waiting it out. But enough is enough now. Now that I have a solution... Now that we've already troubleshot, now that the rug has the solution is the two new niggas has <laughs> been pulled from under under us. Uh, now that the 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 Joe Avengers, there's a team of Joe Avengers out there. I'm watching you. Hmm? There's a team of you Joe Avengers out there that seem to be hurt because you cannot hurt me. That's where some of these. I'm not sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm laughing. It's true. Yeah. People keep trying to hurt me and I just keep rising to the occasion. The smear campaign didn't work. I hit old boy and said good morning eight months ago. He still ain't said nothing bad. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, you mad at good morning? <laughs> wow. Whoa. Didn't work. Chat. Should I... Should I step in and try to solve this Joe Budden and Charlemagne beef? I feel like I'm almost like a stepchild of it. I, I love both of them, and I I look up to both of them, you know? Like, I mean, it's arguable that I, could, I should look at both of them as my peers, but I look at both of them as, you know, pioneering some shit that I do benefit from. I, 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 I would be a hypocrite to say otherwise. But seeing both of them, like, it's hard. For, I can't really go either way, you know? You know, Joe's going to always hold a special place to my heart, for better or for worse. And then, you know, Charlemagne, you know, he's he's going to do the same as well. Like, both of them have shown me things, whether by, by standing next to me or, or talking me through it. Like, I think he's speaking about Charlemagne right here. And, and should I... Sh sh should I just let them resolve this shit and just be like, yo, ah, right, you got enough for I'm stay the fuck out of it? Or should I, you know, you know, try to, you know, bring people together? Even though truth be told, when I got beef, niggas don't give two fucks. They be like, yo, let that nigga be forever. Hmm. All right, let's keep playing. Some of those other claims from some other people didn't work. It's not going to stick to the wall. I'm doing, I'm running these businesses on the side of what's right and wrong, on the side of what I would want as a creator, and I'm doing it for my kid who's a creator and every other creator to follow. The end. And that might be another huge part of this. He ain't a creator. <laughs> Wait, who's not a creator? Neither is he. Entrepreneurs, see? maybe. Creator. We'll fight about it another time. Is he saying that Rory ain't a creator? <laughs> Yo, chat, man. I couldn't violate these niggas more than this. But how... I, tell me what I should have done, Parks. What should I do? <laughs> You'll never see my books. I'm consistent in that. <laughs> I own it. You'll never see my books. I'm not going to ask you to open up your Emotional Oranges I'm books. I'm going to open up my books, so... I feel you on that. The end. Yeah. And if ever you come and say, 
properly, hey, I want to renegotiate. I want you to see your books. It would grant me the premise to say, no, <laughs> no. But don't just sit around Aggie about it. Don't sit around making faces tight, mad, pissed, attempting to leverage friendship and business. I compartmentalize well, and these are two different things. In friendship, we can hang out. <laughs> we can go smoke some hookah, <laughs> join a kickback in business. I ain't for play play. I'm not for play play. I got enough years of getting fucked without the Vaseline. I'm not letting it happen from anybody. I have two kids. Mm. Come on, man. We old, man. Come we old, on, man. man. I don't have time for this. Hey. They're either being ill advised or they're advising wrong. Uh, I'm I, protected. I think they also have. Let um, me tell the audience before you go. Uh -huh. I am protected. Everything is fine. If you're wondering why Ish and Ice have continued to be on Patreon, it's because I never knew the state of what these two niggas would do at any given moment. And I will not allow any of gang, any of gang to be affected by bad business. Contingency plan. I fuck with it. <laughs> And self-centeredness and all of these other really toxic, toxic things. The clear out was to go get the energy right. <laughs> Stop coming in another man's fucking house with a face. Stop coming in somebody's house with an attitude. Stop coming in somebody's house with entitlement and all of this other shit is somebody's house. I feel for this nigga. For this man, rather. Cause that's my friend and I love him. So when, when I see mistreatment, I just don't stand for it. And Rory should know that about me because when dudes tried to mistreat him, mm -hmm. I handled that. Wait, 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 what? Wait, wait, what? Wait, what did Joe just say? When dudes tried to not R Rory sending goons to niggas cribs. Rory's a goon. Rory's a killer. Wait, wait. I didn't hear that shit right. Niggas tried. Let me listen. Me. Joe. I went. I went. Yeah, yeah, no. So, yeah. That's my reaction vid. No, you can't keep inviting me to your hands, Rory. Because when someone that I know and love and someone that he knows and loves took the time out to really sort you out for two months to see what that fist work was about, it wasn't about much. That's not what? an insult. That's what happened because I'm psychoanalyzing. I had an issue with that. You're on this pod. Niggas is pulling up to see you. Whoa, dog. No. You can't do that. You can't find him here. You got to find him somewhere else. You can't come find That's just who I am. When they had that real uncomfortable conversation with y'all that I wasn't present for and I thought it was cowardly, I took offense. I get into protect mode. Morale need to be kept high at all times around here. I know what creative shit look like when it ain't. Am I on a rant? Am I just rambling? No, it's cool. It's shit that needs to be said, yeah. right? Yeah. <sighs> the accounting looks beautiful. And these two gentlemen have been overpaid for years. And unfortunately, what happened About was... About time somebody said it. Overpaid! Imagine paying a fucking bum who only talks in ad-libs. Yo, that's crazy. You're getting paid for that? World that I could never imagine. I never foresaw a world where they wouldn't be here and I had to try to make it work without them. Mm. And in that, which these two gentlemen should have equated for in their risk assessment, what happens? Well, you bring some other people through, and you keep things going, and yeah, the numbers doing what numbers do, but it's numbers, and after a few weeks, <laughs> everything's fine. <laughs> Everything was fine. And it's a shame that we have to have to do this Rory, if you're trying to audit me, I'm ne I'm never putting you on Patreon. I mean, this should just be plain as day. Benner, Brenner, Brandy, whoever's representing this kid, I'm never putting you on Patreon. Any deal that exists is in my name, and anything that was happening 
is because I'm a really good guy. When I say that, the Rory gets offended. He thinks I'm being egotistical when I say, hey, dog, some of the deals, ah. and some of the stuff that's happening like behind the yeah. scenes, some of this magic, some of what you make in the tour, tour like, ah. it's because of this and this and this and this and that. And that's how this really happened. I mean, if we're going to be transparent. This is a commercial break. Um, if you're watching this right now on my live stream, uh, please make sure to support a black king, you know, up and coming an entrepreneur. You know, he's been an entrepreneur in many regards, but uh, he got a Patreon going where, you know, it's all about black, you know, black institutions. He's about, you know, independency. He's doing his thing. And um, listen, we're not into um, promoting any type of um, bootlegging of his content. Please make sure you go support him on Patreon. He's the head of uh, um, um, was it Creator Equity at Patreon? A great brother and someone who has finally tossed out the garbage, the useless waste known as Mealy Mall in Rory. The fuck you want to be? Unsigned and rich is a great place, uncontrolled to be. and able to navigate where you see fit in this industry is unheard of for two days a week. I wish they had more of a point of reference, but for two days a week, which in Joe's brain is about 28 hours a month, it's under 30 hours. It's still kind of a part time job. You're telling me you rich from that? I would be going to get with my team so fast. I did it, actually. <laughs> That's what you do. I went. That's I, what I, you I, just, do. I always pick up and go to work. I went to Complex for 20 grand, four days a week, happy. 22. <laughs> 22,000. No, you took your cut. So, I, I took a you reduced, took a reduced oh, that, cut. That, 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 <laughs> a, a, a reduced cut. That, that deal. Just, just, no, no, no. It's it's just to say because that's what the fuck needed to happen in order for us to get up four days a week and go to work. That was the springboard to hey, what was to come next. Let me be transparent again. Ian's always taking a short. <laughs> always. But hey, ex, no, no, no. That's not true. When he wasn't taking a short, it wasn't no money. <laughs> That's yeah, right. that's right. Hey, he was getting. He might have been paying for shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. He sold me on his partner. That's a big one. I can't. <laughs> I can't let Maul say I don't give a fuck about that contract when everything that that argument stemmed from was from that contract. You can't tell me that I don't care about money and I can get money from everywhere because I'm going to sit in my head and say, no, that's not true. <laughs> no, you can't. We're in a recession. <laughs> They're just fighting to get money. Yours ain't changed in years. It's going up and up and up and up and up. Which is why if Maul was here, like I thought he would be here. I called him. He didn't return my call again. But if he were here, I was coming here to tell him. That through thick and thin, through any storm. Hey, for all my people who upload all my shit on YouTube, could you make this my face for the thumbnail? Make that my face. That's it. That's all I want. That's all I want. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> all the things that we've been through and experienced together. I understand people may grow apart. I wanted to tell him that if ever there were distance to be created between us, if ever we were to just grow apart and just not be as close as we once were, what I was trying not to say to him that other pod was nobody across the world on my end would believe that it had anything to do with Rory. <laughs> I was trying to get that point across without getting it across, really. Mm. But if we are distant, on my end, it would never be because of Rory. Nobody would assume it. Nobody would think it. Nobody would imagine it. There's not a prediction. Basically, Rory, you a bum! You a bum, nigga! You a bum! And I ain't done exposing you yet, nigga. You got fired, but I only got started with you. I'm waiting for you to try to spring your head up and say some shit. I got a whole 30 clip for you, nigga. 
and content. I don't talk violence. That's you. You threatened my life. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I'm only here talking about <laughs> content. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a street nigga But they teach you boundaries In the streets as well as men You know there are man Boundaries In business mm -hmm. They teach you Boundaries In all relationships Family, romantic And in friendship Boundaries are important. Mm -hmm. I'm clear in mine. You can say that it's a detachment issue or whatever, but my boundaries, my red lines, my non-starters are clear in each of these respective areas. Also, what they teach you in each of this... Each Joe, not to cut you off, let's get to the bullshit. Why you gonna fire this nigga? Fire him! Channel the Vince McMahon in you! You're fired! I need to hear it. I need to hear it, chat. I need to hear it. My soul won't be content without it. Please tell me the time, Sam. You're fired! Yes, yeah, I had to put some spit on my mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I get. That's how Vince McMahon did it, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got spit on my screen now. Oh my god. <laughs> Tell me the timestamp. <laughs> Tell me the timestamp. Hurry, hurry. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this. Oh, thank you. Yo, Grand Wizard, man. Yo, hey, listen. Hey, listen. I, you know, Grand Wizard, that, that's my nigga. Like, it's my right hand. But, oh, yeah, I fuck with all oh, y'all. Yeah, all my chat niggas the same. Like, I be asking y'all questions because, yo, y'all could give me this shit real quick. Y'all could be like Grand Wizard, too. He told me the time stand right now. We getting straight to it. Here we go. Here we go, Chad. I don't know anybody to be at the label while they are auditing the label. Because if you do that, when you return to the label, you should not expect for things to remain the same. Am I off? Come on. You no. You talk. <laughs> Erickson, you talk. Somebody else talk. They think I just be feeding y'all shit and I got y'all hypnotized. <laughs> well, well, listen. The, 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 the accusation of the actions are that you're a thief. Correct. Right? Yeah. So we start with that as the baseline. And your actions after that, that continue to dig down that alley, are leaving you with less and less good faith than you had when you began. It's just like the, the analogy that you've been making this entire time. It's like when you go into something with your girl, she's accusing you of being a cheater. and Right. You, you can only be accused of cheating so many times before you force that person to start living that life or act accordingly. Right. No one wants to be accused of something they didn't do. So, you know, we're looking at a scenario where uh, anxiety and insecurity is leading the way as opposed to... Rory! I'm pregnant! Is a train for you, you bum ass today? The girl thinks you're cheating and wants to go on your phone. I've been there before. Men have been there before. Mm -hmm. Something I'll say is, fam, I'm never letting you go on my phone. But the fact that you're not resolved unless you do, that brings problematic to me. Mm -hmm. The fact that you'll never be the same from that point on, mm -hmm. whether you look or not, whether you look phone. in the phone or not, brings problematic to me. And three, if you go in the phone, if you're looking for a problem, I expect you to find a problem. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how it goes. What I wanted to come in here and say was your dogs. I don't know how you read the tea leaves, but this will never be the same just based off the accusation. Yeah, no one wants to be called a thief. Just off you telling me I'm cheating. My level of devotion is not the same. And if I've been moving on friendship and love. He's breaking up with your bum ass. You fucking homeless dweeb. But if you're looking for a change, then that would be the way to approach it in some people's minds. Hmm? If you were looking for a change, then that may be the way someone oh, so you, decides I to wanted, approach it. I wanted to come in here and tell them. Hey, do whatever you want, but what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? Y'all didn't play that. Remember, 
you bum shot to call other podcasters untalented. Nigga, you had the chance to prove your worth. You did nothing. That new niggas, what's their name? Ice and Ish, they bodied you. People love them way more than you. I'd be trying to explain to the suits. When they had a problem with me and wanted to peer act with somebody else, I'm sitting there saying, that ain't the chemistry. That's facts, talk Joe! You got to be able to, the suits don't get it. The creatives understand chemistry. I wanted to say to them, yo, dog, I don't know what's going on right now, but the chemistry ain't there, one and two. I've been exactly the same the whole time. And if the chemistry's gone then some of your value and worth leaves. And if that wasn't obvious and evident, their plan showed that. Hey, when I used to say you could play the hand upside down, I was talking to them. There's a lot of things I said over the last year. I was talking to them. That Gilly podcast breakup, I was talking to them. <laughs> I've always been talking to them. <laughs> so what does it mean? That nigga was giving you fucking bum ass nigga bars. You were sitting right next to Ron Cock and Ron Cock. I hope you bitch ass niggas have plan B, condoms, and lubricant. You bitch. The nigga gave you bars. Right while you were sitting next to him. And you thought he was talking about the ops. He was talking to you. Merely more. You better have lubricant, you bum ass nigga. You were getting penetrated. You didn't even know, you bum. No matter where you put me. Is that off? Is that lost on anybody here? Am I offending anybody by saying that? I'm mean. Not at all. No, and I feel I, the same way about myself. <laughs> I want to. I want to make a note. Honestly, I, I come from a bias standpoint, but it You're really doesn't you. matter. Shout out to Ian. You knew them niggas wasn't shit from day one. By the way, I've talked to Ian. When we talk, we like, yo. Of course. Big academics and Big Joe Bunny are going to get back together at some point. We don't even talk about the Stooges. Ruri, if you thought you could block Joe for millions, nigga, you're dumb. Mealy Mall used to hide detergent. That's 30 bucks. If you thought you could block this nigga for millions, you're dumb. When the timing is right, when the stars align... Joe Bunn and academics is going to take the industry and they're going to run with the bag. It's going to be the best show, the biggest show, the most entertainment. And what you not, not going to see like them pussy ass niggas. When Joe get at me, I'm going to eat that shit. I'm going to go talk to my fan base. You're going to eat that shit. And we're going to get back at that nigga again. Fuck it. What we not going to do is, oh, I thought we were friends, I thought you respect. No. We know what y'all want. We going to give y'all the most entertainment that I've ever seen. In conversation. In intrigue. Laughter. Turmoil. Confrontation. You see when Joe jumped across that desk? We got it for y'all. Mealy Mall, and by the way, just to really, because I know y'all going to use this. Oh, your Joe was playing some shit with. Bro, I got other shit I'm playing that ain't got nothing to do with Joe Button. That I, I, I personally believe he should have his podcast lit. I don't know who's going to be on it. It's not my choice. I don't want Joe to not have his podcast is like a, a home base for him. Just like my Twitch and my YouTube. I want him to have somebody on it. I want that shit to be lit. Don't think me and Joe, we not playing no shit to replace no niggas. But if you think that because you even, like, you ain't even make Joe no money like that. You think Joe gonna pass up on millions 
to deal with somebody who he can't even have a proper conversation with you because you're lying about. You didn't want to tell Joe, like, yo, Joe, yeah, I was tweaking, but I did send niggas to his crib. Yeah, we pulled up in a little Kia. We dropped off a letter. We thought he was going to learn his lesson, but he started talking more shit. You pussy, you so pussy, you won't even admit that, bro. Rory, I'm going to be on your head top for life. I'm telling you this right now. On your head top for life. Listen, niggas be like, yo, act you won. No, he going to try again to come back. I'm going to be on his head top then too. Could be with Joe Bunny. Could be with anybody. That boy tried to play me in real life. And nobody on planet Earth will ever have me shook in real life. I pay six figures in taxes. I own a big ass crib. I don't care no I don't care what gangster rapper I think. Where I live at, before I'm here shook of any nigga, I'm out of this shit. So the mere fact you even thought that was a was an option, I'm gonna be on your head top for life. When your kid is born, I'm on your both head top for life. For life. I'm telling you this now. For life. Forever and ever and ever. For life. I don't forgive shit like that. I'm telling you this now. Don't think, oh, Ak is for life. When I wake up, I wonder if you fucking catching the L. Woke up at four this morning. And I said, let me see if my source, the nigga who told me that you wasn't going to be on today, because y'all taking a strike. Let me see if you're right. I did my Googles. I don't even think there was something uploaded. Somebody hit me and be like, yo, Joe uploaded something and deleted it. What? Yeah, them bum ass things wasn't there. Ruri, I'm going to make sure. This is my life mission. You won't come out and publicly admit that you did that shit. You tried to scare me, nigga. No man. There's no man that lives on earth that will ever scare me at the place I live at. And you try that, I will never in my life squash it. Until you come out and publicly admit it. And apologize. Until you do that, nigga, I don't care if you with Joe Budden, Charlemagne, Ebro, Rosenberg, Apple, Spotify, Tidal, Jay-Z, Nas, Jesus, anybody, nigga. It will never be over. I promise you. I will never let that go. Ever. I promise you. And the more the pussy niggas you be talking to keep telling me shit, I'm going to keep ruining your shit day after day. The more your side bitches keep coming through and getting fucked, I'm going to keep ruining your shit day after day. The more your, your, your main chick is insecure, I'm going to keep ruining your shit week after week. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. I am good with that. You need to come out to the public and explain what you did. I'm going to tell you this. Come out to the public and explain what you did. And if you lie, nigga, I'm on your head forever. It's cool. You don't got to ever tell the truth. What Joe is right about, Joe said it ain't his job to whatever. What Joe is right about, I 100% know you were behind it. I will never, ever in my life let that go. I'm telling you this now. You got fired. Your bitch beating your ass. You catching all type of L's. I'm sitting here and I'm waiting and I'll get up early every morning to make sure you catch a fucking L every day. I will keep ruining your life until the day you take your last breath. I promise you until you come out and explain what you did. Remember what I said. If you thought this was a victory lap, nigga, this was just a start. I'm glad Joe got himself away from you because now I could take the gloves off with your dumb ass. I felt bad when I was going in on you because I said, damn, I feel like when I'm dissing this nigga, I know he going to lead a podcast to do some dumb shit. Joe going to be in a weird position. I fuck with Joe. That's my guy. But when you ain't near that nigga, Joe, I ain't got nothing. There's nothing that making me feel bad. As I said, every fucking day. 
Chat, if you ever see me move on, slap me. Focus me. There will never be a nigga in this, in this world that think he tried to put a fear in my heart. And I backed down, I forgave, and I let him off the hook without him properly telling the world that he's pussy and that he really didn't want what he tried to do. I'm telling you, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, I promise y'all, it will be the first thing I think of and the last thing I think of when I go to sleep. I don't play that type of shit. If you think losing your job and your little relationship or your marriage was, was whatever, and for all you bitch-ass niggas who question me, I will never stop with that nigga till he loses everything in his life. I promise you, I will waste millions on it. Nobody plays with me like that and think it's all cool. I don't even care if it was Rory or Meek. Nobody. You pull up to my crib, you already tell me what time it is. It's war, nigga. It's war. There ain't no threat. It's war. It's war, nigga. I'm going to ruin your relationship. I'm going to ruin your, your, your relationship with your kids, your family, your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, your grandpa, every single thing in earth. That's my life mission. I'm telling you this now. I'm going to bumble clock, Jamaica. I'm in a response to nobody. So when I pussy like y'all try to play me, I'm going to come here and get run around by nobody, dog. And nobody you respect that I respect can stop me. Only thing you won't ever catch me doing, I'll never walk myself into a jail cell. Because I know where your mama live and I know where you live at. But I don't play those games. I'm just keep saying that. I'm going to just keep saying that. You'll never have me walk myself into a jail cell. But I'm always ready for you to walk yourself into a casket. For that dumb shit you did. Tory, mm -hmm. plenty of times Parks and I have come from state to actually understand the luxury they're being provided. Some of this could come off as upside down when it's yeah. really a blessing. Mm. So someone who's receiving something above and beyond what they should be getting may look at it like the opposite if they don't know what they're looking at. Mm. And so when Joe is deciding to be mm. over generous and go above and beyond the agreement, those would be the moments that myself...
<laughs> I'm muted, right? <laughs> Maybe it was glad that I was muted. I was saying some wild shit just now. <laughs> I was saying some wild shit. Nah, yo, 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 the point is this, man. Um, I don't want to see nobody really even talk to me about how a homie is, whatever, whatever. The moment you pull up to a nigga's crib, bro, like, you stop talking a lot of shit. Like, shit is on a different level. Until that pussy ass nigga, Ruri McFarlane, whatever his name is. And again, as I said, one thing with me, I ain't never gonna be dumb enough to walk myself into a jail cell. You know what? You know how I keep that lid? I'm gonna bring it down here in a second. No matter whatever happened with me, that bum ass nigga, I'm gonna always have the proof that this nigga tried to put a threat on my life at first, and whatever happened, I just had to defend myself. Straight up. We got cameras for that. We got the actual letter. We got everything. But if anybody think that your act you going too hard, get your bitch ass the fuck on out of here. You play with me, and I mean any, any nigga. It could even be a rapper. You play with me like that, all right, cool. Bruh, at the end of the day, we all men. But I'm going to tell you the truth. That nigga crossed the line that if any of y'all thought Joe Bun could ever fix that, y'all look crazy. If you thought Joe could have told me chill, nigga, fuck any millions of dollars I could have got with Joe. That shit can't squash that. Facts. If Joe told me act, the only way I work with you is if you don't say nothing about that nigga, I say, Joe, fuck that. I'll never work with you again in my life. That's how it goes. Because if somebody pulled up on Joe where Joe and his newborn was, was at, I promise you, man, Joe would be Come on, man. Like, y'all stop, stop playing. Y'all stop with the bullshit. So, when I hear people be saying that, oh, Joe should have said this to act. You think Joe could have said nothing to me, bro? They would have hung up in that nigga's face, man. Straight up. I would have hung up in his face. Like, get off my line, bro. What, you trying to protect your little podcast? You trying to protect that little bitch-ass nigga? Go ask that nigga why he did it. Because it told me a different thing. Until that's answered, my nigga, I don't want to hear nobody. I don't want to hear Joe. I never asked Joe for his opinion on that person. Ask that nigga. That pussy ass nigga, Ruri, asked for my number from another nigga. And you know what I told him? I said, bruh. I said, yo, that nigga said you want to talk to me? I said, let me ask you a question. Did that nigga tell you about what he did at my crib? Oh, no, he said it wasn't him. It was his girl, blah, blah. Click. I'm good. I'm good. I don't want to talk about that shit no more. That nigga gonna lie to y'all. I'm straight. I don't want no nigga to lie to me about some shit that I already know. Rory, you are dead pussy, nigga. Until you come out and admit, I don't care nothing about you and Joe. You can rob Joe, Joe can rob you. I don't give a fuck. I'm rich, nigga. I don't care. You, until you, I will be on your head top till you die. Until you come out and you say, act. Listen. It ain't no fucking coincidence that I tweeted your fucking zip code a day after a nigga dropped something in your mailbox and also reference calling or, or reference stooges, which you've always called us. Uh, if he keep lying about that, let me tell you this. I'm going to have a, I'm a, listen, my shit up already. So I'm going to have a, a great time clowning this nigga, dancing on his grave, pissing on his grave. For the rest of my, my my career and the time I got on this earth. Because a bitch nigga like Ruri will never have me feel any type of discomfort where I live at. And if you ain't realize, I've been egging this pussy ass nigga on for him to say something or do something else. But it ain't happened yet. Every night, I'm like, tonight, tonight never. So this bitch ass nigga Ruri just always remember... Fuck what you got going on with Joe Bun. Fuck your relationship, nigga. Fuck everything you got in life. What I got with you will never, ever, 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 ever be over. And that's how deep it is. I'm going to get all stream because I really don't give no fucks about this rest of the shit they, they talking about. That nigga got fired on. I, I was getting to that part, but I'm going to offer the stream because I ain't really. Y'all niggas think I be celebrating that shit. That pussy ass nigga. Until all of y'all. I don't care what type of commentary you got about what me, what I said. I don't care what y'all thought Joe said to me until you get that pussy to admit what the fuck he did. I don't got shit other than smoke for him constantly, every day, 
every moment. I'm going to celebrate every fucking L. I'm going to have my Versace robe, my Lambo, my big ass crib, and I'm going to sit here, laugh while all y'all can hate me till I die. I will never forgive that. And I'm telling you that until that pussy admits that, I will never get over this, okay? Let me just play the part of this nigga got fired. I don't give a fuck about that podcast enough to really go through everything. I'm going to tell you where my hatred come from. A nigga show up to your crib if you don't got smoke for that nigga for life. You, Like, what's up with you? I got smoke with that nigga for life. I'm telling you right now. You feel me? You show up to my crib. I ain't got time for that type of shit. Joe can't save you. What the fuck you think Joe going to say? Nigga, I make millions a year. If I get with Joe and do a show, okay, it's more millions. I'm rich. You ain't get the, you ain't get the memo? Look around. I've been showing y'all everything I'm in mind. I'm rich as fuck. I don't need Joe. Joe don't need me. If Joe ever said, act, yo, I'll do a show with you, but you gotta, Joe, you in that show, go to hell. I'm good. I don't need none of that bullshit. I'm gonna tell you this right now. Feel me? You start playing in a certain type of realm, you better keep it there. All right. Uh, what my nigga? Yo. Let me figure this out. Somebody said, I'm wilding too much. No, nigga. Never. Never. I'm never wilding too much. I'm telling you my honest opinion. My honest emotions. Because I keep seeing people saying, yo, act, you doing too much. I don't want nobody asking me about that shit no more. Ask that pussy ass nigga why the fuck he showed up to my crib. Facts. I ain't drink. You can say, I, nigga, I'll wake up in the morning and say the same thing. I tweet it out now, nigga. You know when I tweet it, I'll leave it there. Nigga, I'm not beef with nobody, but I'm just trying to show you that when I'm talking about these niggas, I ain't coming here for entertainment. I know I said it was a classic stream. Y'all got the classic shit already. I'm good. I just want to let that bitch ass nigga know and both of these niggas know I will never get past this. I don't care about you and Joe. I don't care. Nigga, I don't care if you work at Walmart, nigga. My goal in life going to be to buy the Walmart to fire you. I don't care where you're at in life. My goal will always be to ruin you. Because you thought you could play with me and nobody plays with me like that. I promise you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And if I didn't do it, y'all would call me a bitch. And if I do do it, y'all be like, oh my God, he's, he's so pressed. Fuck it. I'm just telling you what matters to me. Only thing I'm going to tell you, y'all ain't never going to see me walk myself into a jail cell or trick myself out of deals I got coming up. I got a lot of great business partners and I love them. But, hey. Just like everybody who got regular business or whatever, everybody got issues and whatever, and they, they go into shit and they coexist, I coexist as well, all right? Um, let me just play this last thing. Grant has sent it to me. Grant, thank you for this, by the way. This is the last thing I'm going to play because I don't want to be um, listening to this whole shit. And this is no jab to Rory or Maul. I love them both. Or anyone. But, or anyone, but... I just didn't think it was the right move at the time. Certain mm -hmm. decisions Joe made to go above and beyond, I felt like were going to hurt us in the long run. Uh -huh. I think it sent the wrong message too soon. And here we are. Well, shit, the I, Cash App deal, right? Well, I mean, the, the, yeah, the Cash App deal, migrating that from pull-up to this when we were in time of need. When Yo, we, lo we, lost it, we, lost a, we lost deals and everybody got a raise. Mm -hmm. No, we had no deal and everyone had a raise. Be very clear. <clears throat> oh, that's what I thought I said. No. no, you said it's we different. lost deals. Yeah. I'm saying we had no. We didn't deals. have a deal. We right. didn't have a deal anywhere. No, right. you had a decision to make. What were you going to do in the interim of losing Spotify, having no yeah. income for everyone that was working on the podcast, mm -hmm. and figuring out what the next steps for the podcast were going to be, being faced with monster propositions and proposals in front of us, and knowing they weren't the right situations, you decided go ahead and start paying everyone like we're getting paid. That was the move. Appreciate that was then that. met that. with. I'll speak for the team. Appreciate that. Thank hey, you. No, thank you. Buddy. Thank you. Hey, the tour started looking good. We was laughing at Savon. We staying in Four Seasons hotels everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's five star restaurants, five star everything. Me and Pars come from something totally different. Corey and Ian come from something totally. Everybody here comes from something totally different. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, you spend the money. That it's what I beg Slaughterhouse to do. Hey, can we get a tour bus? 
<laughs> get anything to make the artist feel good. Oh, please. But it's also a business. Oh, please. We could be associates kicking that's it. A Who cares? Of, that's a Who perk. cares? Hey, I don't want to hear that friend shit no more. No doubt. I don't want to hear that everybody ops. But it's a perk. Everybody that, ops. That's a perk. Everybody <laughs> ops. Anybody want. It's on everybody top. I don't want to hear friends no more. I got a few of them. Not a lot. Hey, how I view friendship and how other niggas view friendship is very different. Dill would never. Dub would never. My friends, the people that love me, the people y'all was here on the premise of friendship and we was doing this. He still feels like he has choices and options. He feels like he's entitled to more. Here we go. Rory. Bitch. You are in breach of your contract, and from this point forward, you are fired, and you're not welcome back. Does anybody in here have a problem that I'm the person that has to say that somewhere else? PTSD. I Let's say do it again. all of that to say Let's do it again. We're gonna do this since Rory feels like he has so many options here. Bitch. Somehow he still feels like he's running the show. Bitch. He still feels like he has choices and options. You bitch! He feels like he's entitled to more. Bitch! Rory, you are in breach of your contract, and from this point forward, you are fired, and you're not welcome back. Does anybody in here have a problem that I'm the person that has to say that? No. Maul, I'm the person that has to say that. The gall of you to think that you are observing the way that I am, to think that I have to come to you about a problem I have with another man. We have things sorely mistaken around here. That's not ego and arrogance. It's realism. So no, actually... What I was trying to do was, I was going to say that Rory's in breach. Rory's out of here. We're done. We're done with Rory. Enough of this. He has to go. In the event that you can correct your energy and your thinking and everything that's going on with you and this fucking <laughs> catastrophe that's going on with you, then let's talk about reentry. But you don't get to hold the cards for reentry. Why does he keep talking that way? Can somebody answer me? Because you Don't say it. nothing. Don't worry about it. I'll take accountability. I own it. I own it. I own it. I will own it. We have been friends. I've been handling them as friends. I've been we are. I've been handling people with kid gloves. I'm trying to tiptoe around certain things, but we can no longer do that. There's businesses to run. There's millions to make. The end. If you want to call me phony, I'll take it. I've been called worse by better. Yeah, I wanted to have that conversation. I wanted you to have that conversation a while ago. You know that. Characterized. He kept saying that last party. Oh, I don't want you to paint me that way. I purposely said, I was like, all right, we're the guys that changed when some money came around. No, 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 don't say that. Don't say that. No, I'm saying it because that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Some money came around and now y'all think that I got to tell y'all false information to keep more money because y'all are owed more money. I'm rich. In spirit. <laughs> Not when I keep, I say I'm rich a lot, but I don't mean in money. I mean in spirit. You're doing pretty good too. I'm, Joe, Joe, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable in happiness. I negotiate for happiness. I don't negotiate for money. Real shit. Because I negotiate for happiness, money came. Right. Yep. Real shit. I got a million, I got millions waiting with Puff. State of the culture, you know, it, it can happen. I have millions waiting with Love and Hip Hop. Mm. I have millions waiting for, acad for with academics. Millions. Mm. What are we talking about? I Joe, you lost maybe 150 bucks for that nigga. We gonna get the millions. We gonna get the millions, my brother. We gonna get the millions. I don't have to cheat you in Monopoly. I own the deed. It's mine. <laughs> and how the fuck do y'all know if I had plans of divvying it up, giving ownership, contingent on the work that I see. How do you know if I ain't trying to fucking find a way for this thing to go public, raise some money and everybody get paid? See, entitlement. I came in here and offered Bitcoin out of the kindness of my fucking heart. Know what these niggas said? Oh, this is a dollar. 
This is five dollars. Excuse me? I made a mistake. It's not five dollars. <laughs> It's mad Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is going up mad points since I said that to you. It wasn't $5, and I'm your friend. Why the fuck do you think I would be sitting here offering you $5, you fucking idiot, is what I want to say. I've seen entitlement in too many places. I'm ending here. We've had this whole podcast, and we still ain't even talk about J. Cole. Act. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, we've had this whole podcast and we still ain't talk about the role that academics plays in all of this. Yeah. We have, for some reason, was questioning me and friendship and, and my character. You was there. You was there. I was there. He was questioning my friendship and my character as someone that has overpaid him and overprotected him. Because I speak to academics. Because I did a live with academics. Why are you not allowed to communicate with this man? I'm so confused with that whole thing. And that was the same pod that I came in here and said, I was referencing Snowfall. I said, you know, y'all want me to be mad at how another nigga talk? They both sat here and, said, and agreed. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nigga. That's what y'all doing. <laughs> Rory thought that I that our friendship was in turmoil and I and I, and I didn't view him as a friend and he couldn't view me as a friend because I may work with academics again in the future. The Rory yeah, we had a show that I think was one of the best shows ever made. That's a great show. And we have been getting offers for that show since I left that show. That's on us to do it tonight. He don't need it and I don't need it. Nobody needs it. Everybody's rich. Niggas is cute. Everybody go like that post. It's on my Instagram right now. They can with fiancés. I wasn't that fortunate. <laughs> I'm with the pigs, man. Hey, hold, pigs. hold on, Chad. I'm about to go get the letter. I'm about to put that up on, on Instagram. I'm going to show them. Nigga, I ruined your life over a fucking letter. A Hallmark card ruined your fucking life, you fucking bum. A Hallmark card you bought and you decided to drop here ruined your life, nigga. Lost your livelihood. Lost your queen, nigga. Lost everything you fucking got. I'm putting it up on the ground. Let me go get that shit right now. Differently about it. I've worked with him. I understand him. I get it. But that was a real bad pod the day, the day that we recorded that when he was mad. And then Maul came in and Rory said, Rory said, Maul, you know Joe would work with academics again? And Maul said, yeah, man, but you already knew that. I didn't pay that no mind, that little exchange. But boy, was it important. These niggas been talking. They ain't stopped talking. <laughs> They've been talking a while. <laughs> I'm sorry that they feel like that's an indictment against our friendship that I would work with academics again, but I can work with people I have differences with. I can work with people I disagree with. I can work with people. Hey, I've gone my whole career saying fuck everybody and fuck numbers. I'm going to do what I want. It wasn't so fruitful. I'm done with that. I can work with people. <laughs> I'm coming up with ideas for me and people. And that was the same day I said to Roy Chad, help me with this photo shoot. I never got rid of it. I'm going to take a picture of it. I'm going to put it on the gram. I'm going to leave it there. That's why I ruined your life, you bitch-ass nigga. Let me take pictures right now. I want to remind you why your life in tur turmoil. Here we go. That's why I ruined your life, nigga. Bet. Throw it up on the gram right now. Chad. Everybody go like that. Hold up. In case anybody ever think I'm lying, I don't. I don't do lies.
Here we go. It's too big. Hold on, my bad. Pause. It's at IM Academics if you're wondering what it is. There we go. What's Mealy Mall's uh, uh, tag? I'm tagging both in bum-ass things. What's, what's the name? I don't even know this Instagram. It's up there, chat. Everybody go like this right here and comment. Sit right here. I said, this is why I ruins your life. I hope you have nightmares about doing this for the rest of your life, you fucking bozo. Rest in peace. This is it right here. Yeah. Ain't no postage on it. They just dropped it off. I told y'all they dropped it off. I told you they drove up with the key. I told you. I told you. This is why I ruined that bum ass nigga's life. And this is why I'm gonna keep ruining his life every single day. I'm gonna leave that up there. That's gonna be a I hope Instagram don't delete. If it ever get deleted, it's Instagram. I never take that off. So I ruined his life, nigga. Let's go back to Joe. What are you saying, Joe? Yo, I was there. What he told me? No. Hold on. I'll let's go back clean. a little bit. Let's go back a little bit. Rory said. Maul, you know Joe would work with academics again? And Maul said, yeah, man, but you already knew that. I didn't pay that no mind, that little exchange. But boy, was it important. These niggas been talking. They ain't stopped talking. <laughs> they been talking a while. <laughs> I'm sorry that they feel like that's an indictment against our friendship that I would work with academics again, but I can work with people I have differences with. I can work with people I disagree with. I can work with people. Hey, I've gone my whole career saying fuck everybody and fuck numbers. I'm going to do what I want. It wasn't so fruitful. I'm done with that. I can work with people. <laughs> I'm coming up with ideas for me and people. And that was the same day I said to Rory, Rory, did you send some niggas to his house? You was there. Mm -hmm. You was there. You was there. Y'all was there. What he told me? No. I'll come clean. I wasn't really asking for him to tell me whether he was or not. I was asking as the perfect runway for me to say, Rory, do you know I'm trying to get $100 million from Spotify or anybody else? And you as a profit participant, if you're sitting here actively going to people's houses in an attempt to hurt them or drop a letter in the mailbox or do anything of that sort, your head's not in the game, which would add to what I've been thinking about you. Your head is not in the game. But he told me no. So I left it alone. And he then took offense that I believed that he did that. But it's not that I believe that he did that. I just believe that academics believe that. I don't know that man to be a liar. I do not know act to be a liar. I know him to have a different understanding of some things. But I do not know him to be a liar. 
That's not an indictment against you, Rory. I just don't know him to lie. So if he's saying that he believes it, and guess what? If you did that, and I think you did it too, you're going to take whatever comes with it. If he want to kill you for the rest of his life, Rory, you're going to have to take it. That's part of accountability. Taking what comes with an action that you did. And I don't know if you did it or not. I ain't spoke to him about it. I ain't spoke to you about it since then. But what I do know is, I would have told you, that's the wrong move. If you want to squash something, maybe you don't. But we should if we're trying to get $100 million from somewhere. If you want to squash it, let me go squash it. Let me talk to him. I know him. I can kick it with him. He got his own mind. I can't make him do shit. But let me try it. I don't know what the beef there is. But from that point on, I think Rory looked at our friendship a little differently. And I never jumped in. Because if you send somebody to my house, or if I believe that, then you got to take what comes with that. That's none of my business. I'm staying out of it. As a friend. I don't think Ack is harm is a threat to Rory. <laughs> I don't think he has any idea of trying to harm Rory physically. Are you kidding me? You want me to take my mind away from real business and millions to deal with you thinking Ack is about to do something that he never did? Over a girl that you with or not with, it's none of my business. It's your personal shit. It's not mine. But we can't keep avoiding the fucking elephant in the room. I thought everybody was looking at Act the way I was looking at him. Like, I was Act. I didn't think people were really affected by anything academics was saying. That's how it was painted behind the scenes, you guys that's not here. Y'all said y'all wasn't affected. But then you keep looking affected. And I keep dealing with the effects and the ramifications of it without talking to Ack. And y'all think that I'm leaking information to Ack. No, he's just good at what he does. <laughs> I ain't spoke to this kid. This man, he ain't a kid. He might have been a kid back then. He's a man today. I ain't spoke to him. He's guessing because he's worked with me and he's good at guessing, you guys. And if y'all took the shame out of it, so I promise you, what Joe is saying is right. Everything he's saying is right. And now I understand why Joe never intervened. I, I, I always, I kind of did look at Joe a little bit. I'm like, damn, yo, Joe, yo, the niggas that's on your pot, like, if you don't want me, yo, I, I thought about this. I was like, yo, Joe, you know, I'm going to, like, I'm not trying to destroy you. You know that's not the case. But they're on the podcast that you're on. I'm going to light fire to that shit every day. If you don't want me, and I always thought about, I'm like, yo, it's going to do collateral damage because you're going to be effective. These bum-ass niggas ain't going to come to work. I always tell them, like, yo, well, it, it's probably is in Joe's best interest to, like, step in and say something. But now I'm knowing why. Like, bro, them niggas ain't want that nigga to even fuck with me. It was like, yo, nah. Like, Joe was probably telling them, like, yo, bro, I could probably, like, bro, like, let's just talk about this and figure this out. Like, I know him a little bit. Let me, let me just talk about this. Them niggas was trying to tell him, yo, just don't fuck with that nigga. All right, cool. But now... And, and 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 this is where you know I, I told you I always felt conflicted because I, I ain't never tried I won't do nothing that ever hurt Joe. That's why I'm here promoting his Patreon. I'm here still promoting the Joe Bun podcast. But when I see a nigga who's on Joe's platform, if the only way to hurt him, hurt that bum, is to is to light it on fire and burn it, nigga. I'm gonna light it on fire and burn it. Joe never came to me and said, yo, yo, act. Yo, this is what he said, whatever, whatever. And I always thought, I'm like, yo, damn, maybe Joe's just playing the business-wise because me and Joe, we got business shit going on, right? But we're, we're hearing it. He's saying it live. He's saying, bro, them niggas didn't want me to talk to him at all. They didn't want me to squash it. They didn't want me to do nothing. They didn't want me to deal with this guy. Okay, cool. So now when I'm violating him, stop asking Joe to, like, yo, Joe to step in. I'm going to violate this nigga forever. I'm telling you this right now. It's like, it ain't going to change tomorrow. It ain't going to change next week. I'm telling you this forever. I'm always violating this nigga. That's just the facts. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. So I'll be seeing y'all be like blaming Joe for shit. Yeah, I, I, I looked at shit. I'm like, yo, why Joe ain't really saying nothing? Now I'm understanding. Them niggas was trying to tell Joe, like, yo, bro, we not trying to deal with this nigga, bro. Like, bro, we don't want to. Cool. All right. Now y'all going to deal with the consequences. And that's why I'm glad they off Joe's platform because anything I crash and burn with these niggas now, it won't be affecting Joe. 
It will be just affecting them. Anything in life. Anything. You're working with your friend and you both are rich. If you came in here and took the shame out of it, if you came in and addressed this shit a year and a half ago, like I asked both of you niggas to do. That's another thing. Niggas thought that Joe was trying to tell them they could talk about me. They could have addressed it. They could have said what they had to say. Niggas never said nothing. So when y'all be like, yo, act why you keep going on. Man, a nigga come to your crib, bro. Nigga don't want to take accountability. He lying to people saying he ain't do this, he ain't do that. Nigga, you know he did it. You're not going to be on his head forever? Y'all tell me if I'm tweaking. I'm not tweaking. Bros, I'm t like if you don't if if you don't think like me, bro, I, I just think you're a different type of human being. And you know, of course, we all practice forgiveness, and I practice forgiveness as well. Like I'm not trying to, you know, hold up and because I never really have no issues with people like that. But I figured this pussy nigga right here really tried me, so he's thinking that okay, cool, I could intimidate this nigga, I could do something to him. I'm gonna tell you either or, I don't believe he could do. So until he does really either or, I'm going to always push the envelope. He, Listen, don't. Sh that's why I told him, like, you shouldn't have ever showed up to my crib unless you did something. Don't show up with no warning shots. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to have me. Nigga, I'm going to stick my chest out even more. Despite what you think about me, you can think I'm the most bitch-made nigga on earth. I'm telling you how I'm dealing with it. I'm calling you out every day. I'm going to call you a bitch every day. You have every single day that you can show back up. I ain't looking for you. Because as I said, I ain't going to ever walk. I, I live in Jersey. I ain't going to ever walk myself into a jail cell. But if you think that shit sweet and you could punk academics, nigga, pull back up here. We've been waiting for you. Just pull back up. Because I'm only trained in protecting myself and defending myself. I'm never trained in attacking people. All I could say. And I got to keep it on what I could legally say because I... I only know about defending myself, protecting myself. What this here is, what this here is, is called a credible threat. It's linked to an individual who also tweeted out at the same time my, my zip code, which means I'm the person who should be in fear of my life. So if something happens, I'm operating out of fear of my life. That's all I know. And I'll keep it at that. But that nigga's a bitch. Straight up. I ain't never gonna stop saying it. You heard me? Let me just keep hearing Joe and then we're gonna get over this. I'm gonna get off stream afterwards. Do? I was wondering what's up. <laughs> Where's <the> smoke? <laughs> this nigga keep talking, let's get him. Hey, these niggas keep talking, let's get him. Anybody talking, let's get him. I gotta tell y'all that that's what Joe think. <laughs> Come on, man. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Take the time for everybody to get their energy right. Go get right. Figure yourself out. Figure your life out. Do what makes you happy. But do that shit away from me. Energy is good over here. Business is good over here. Creative is good over here. The staff is good over here. The network is good over here. The sponsors are good over here. Everything is good over here. You niggas can audit. You niggas can sue. You will lose. Sorry that it had to culminate this way for me to say this. I wish y'all was here. So I... Man, I told you, didn't I tell you, I said, yo, these niggas, they look, they're on the verge of suing. Niggas are like, oh, act, you lying. Bro, I don't lie about nothing, bro. Bro, I'm the realest nigga you ever gonna meet in media, period, facts. Like, they ain't no nigga realer than me. Joe ain't realer than me. Charlamagne ain't realer than me. Star ain't realer than me. No nigga ain't ever been realer than me, bro. I tell y'all exactly what's going on. I don't lie about it. I don't care about the PR look about it. I don't care if I look like an asshole, I look like a bitch. I just tell y'all what it is. Ain't no nigga that's ever going to come in this shit that's ever going to be as real as me. I give y'all the truth and y'all deal with it. You know why? Because my audience is fuck with me for the truth. Ain't no nigga ever going to be in this shit that's more truthful than me. When I tell y'all a nigga's thinking about doing this or whatever, maybe I heard it. And I did hear it. Bro, my, my niggas is fucking Ruri's side chicks. That's, that's a fact. Mealy Moe's homies, they talking to my niggas because they fuck with me more, bro. Like... He talking to niggas who inspired by me. Like, no disrespect to some of them. Some other them, they, they fuck with me because they watch my shit. Or I fuck with them too. I ain't want to put them on blast. I heard from a couple sources. I'm like, oh. Y'all know some of these people too, but I don't want, like, that's not no, it's not neither here nor there. Like, I fuck with these niggas. These niggas are dope. But y'all can stop saying Joe told me shit, man. Joe ain't tell me a motherfucking thing. But I can understand why people might think Joe told me that. You know why? 
because for a while it felt like I was his mouthpiece because I was spitting the real and Joe was trying to be a friend. He was trying to be a friend to them. Well, I was spitting the real. I'm going in every day. I'm telling what these niggas is fucking up and blah, blah. Joe is still, he got on the baby gloves. He like calling them. So you know why everybody think Joe telling me shit? Because the day that Joe got to give them the big boy treatment, everybody said, oh, you're saying what Ak said. Yeah, you're saying what Ak said because Ak don't ever treat things like babies because he don't have no personal friends like that that he's doing business with. If I was doing business with like a friend like that, maybe I would like, you know, try to coddle them, but I don't. Um, all that being said, man, because I think we're at the end of the road with this. Yo, um, yo, Joe, you know I love you. Um, I'm going to apologize to you. I hope I never knew I put you in precarious situations. That's what, that's how much we never talked. Joe never told me, like, yo, these niggas is pressing me over. I, he never told me that. I promise you. In my life, he never told me that. He's never told me that. Like, yo, act. These niggas is pressing me because they don't fuck with you. They're giving me saying, they're saying that I should never ever work with you. A lot of times me and Joe talked. Like, ask Joe. I, because, you know, I know Joe always be working plays. Joe got 15 million plays right now. Joe called me and be like, yo, Joe or Ian, we were talking. Like, they be like, yo, we got this play in the works. What's up? What's up? Like, how you feeling? Blah, blah. Yeah, we tap in like that. Me and Joe, we might talk about some other shit. Like, you know, like we stay in tune and kind of like like discussing how the space is going. We agree, we disagree. That's it, bro. I'm going to be honest. I never talked about them niggas. I always felt like, I'm going to be honest, I always felt like Joe was going to be on their side. And I, I just took it as the mere fact that Joe never talked about, and never talked about, um, uh, never intervened. Is that like, yo, he's just not trying to get too close. And I know this is going to be niggas that's going to take this and be like, yo, ax lying or whatever. Y'all know I don't lie 100%. I never in my life had conversations with Joe about these dudes. I really figured Joe didn't intervene because I'm like, yo, Joe's like, like, and I know Joe because me and Joe has had conversations. And like, you know, some of the, con y'all know me. I'm a little, some sound dissy and I'll bring up certain shit. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Anytime we had certain conversations with Joe, there would be certain lines that if it was crossed, I, I would see the demeanor change in Joe. He not talking. It's not content no more. Like, when you'd be like, yo, act, that nigga will die. Like, it was certain shit. Like, certain people, I'd be like, all right, we're not about to talk about it on the show because Joe, that's not demeanor of hip-hop conversation no more. Joe's talking. He's, he's, his demeanor is different about how he's dealing with that because of how s severe that is. I've seen that with Joe. So when I seen Joe not even try to address that with me, or we never talked about that, I figured he kind of knew what it was. But also, them niggas stopped talking about me on the podcast, too. So I said, all right, they, they got put in their place. Maybe Joe talked to him out of scene like, yo, bro, I'm trying to get mad money out here, man. Like, are you dumb? Because y'all stop trying to beef with this nigga. Like, yo, y'all going to look crazy. Y'all dropping shit off at his crib. Like, y'all going to look crazy. Y'all going to fumble the bag for me, and I'm trying to get it back for y'all. That's what I really thought it was. I'm hearing the real truth and how Joe explained it now. I'm like, oh, shit. Damn. Like, Joe kind of more agreed with me than I even thought he did. Because I'm telling you, if somebody, you know, I think his, I think his, his youngest son is called Lex. Like, if somebody showed up to his crib, bro, I'm telling you, Joe ain't playing that. He not, he not smiling. He don't want to talk to me about it. He don't want to whatever. It's the same thing, like, play this. You see, with Joe and Troy Ave. Bro, I try to explain that in mad civil ways. With, with Joe and, and Vlad, I try to explain that mad civil ways. Like, yo, bro, whatever, whatever, yo, Vlad's grown. Bro, Joe got a personal beef and vendetta with that. Joe looking at Vlad like, yo, bro, you know when my man's got hurt behind that shit. Bro, that's not no more hip-hop shit. What you think we about to do to still sit here and debate all day? We ain't about to do all that shit. You think I'm about to forgive you over that shit? Bro, I try to mend that beef with Joe and Vlad. He knows. Mad times. Mad times. Me and Vlad, we cool. Vlad is trying to apologize and try to be like, Joe ain't going for that. Joe got smoke for that nigga all the time. He don't fuck with that nigga. That's how it is. I'm telling you this. I try to help them. Joe ain't, ain't want to, whatever. So so I always thought that Joe's thing was like, I ain't going to lie, act if a nigga did that to me, and I'm thinking he's being fair, at least with that. If a nigga did that to Joe, I'm telling you, Joe don't want to have no more conversation, bro. Joe don't want to talk to Vlad no more because Vlad filmed a nigga showing up to his man's crib and his man got slapped. Joe don't want to have no more conversation in life with Vlad. Vlad has tried to apologize. He don't care. He don't care. So I always had that in my mind. Like, yo, the reason why Joe don't really, Joe understand. Because if a nigga ever showed up to Joe's crib, they, they ain't going to be a soul on planet Earth that could tell him that he got to forgive them or, oh, he got to chill and how he deal with them. That's just how it is. 
So when I hear these dumbass things, oh, oh, Joe told you this, boy, are you stupid? Nigga, I just gave you the whole history of the shit. If you still gonna believe that, you a dumb nigga anyway. But anyway, man, I, I think I think I'm pretty much at the end of the road, man. I ain't gonna keep like watching the whole thing. I think I really got my main part across. I'm glad them bum ass niggas got fired. Listen, man, I'm gonna always have hate for them just off the simple fact that what they did, that's not that's not some shit that you could just kind of move on and just get past. I can't move on past it. I'm telling y'all right now. And especially when the bitch ass nigga is still lying about what he did. He has never admitted the truth to Joe. He never admitted the truth to me. He never admitted it publicly. This won't go down as somebody just acting like, oh, Ak is wildin'. I ain't wildin'. You heard Joe. Joe said, even if he don't believe me, he believed that I believe what I believe, which is, I respect that too. Nigga, would you think I just made that up? Bruh, he know I'm not just going in on them as an easy target. It's not, it's, nigga, I'm really serious. So, again, I'm going to leave that there. Ruri and Mealy Mall, rest in piss, you bum-ass nigga. I want to watch y'all keep failing in this industry, and y'all going to keep watching me. I'm going to have my foot on y'all fucking neck while y'all gasping for air every single time. This ain't, this, this ain't the end, nigga. This is just the start. I'm glad Joe's away from you. Now that I can really apply pressure like I really want to because I used to feel bad when Joe was near to y'all, all right? Suck a dick. Rest in piss. Let me get off of this bitch.